Heavenly greetings in Jesus' name. Yes, the Lord be with your spirit. Thank you so much for joining us from different parts of the world for this Reflections on the Journey through the Bible. Yes, we believe that you're here on God's invitation. Just as you took the invitation from God and you received that invitation from Him to take that journey through His Word by His Spirit. And before we go into the session today, we just want to take a few moments to listen to some experiences of people who have um, taken this journey through the Bible. We know all of you have that you're watching and joined. You've joined us in this journey and we want to take some opportunity now to listen to some people who've been blessed, so blessed by their experience of taking their journey through the Bible. And we want to hear from them, but will encourage your faith and lift your spirit to prepare our hearts and ask God for the grace for eyes to see and ears to hear what Jesus is telling us through his word, what he has in store for us today in Jesus' name. So um, if, if we are ready, we'd like to go to Christine Robinson, who's joining us from the UK, who wants to share her experience of the journey through the Bible. Christine, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you. So... Can you just share with us a bit about your experience um, taking the journey through the Bible with the University of God? How has it impacted your life and your faith? Oh, greatly. Uh, my journey started with a prayer as instructed by a man of God, Racine. Um, he said you have to pray before you read the Bible, say, Lord, reveal yourself to me in your word. And as I started reading, um, I realized that everything God does or was doing was for a purpose. That that was God's way of communicating with us uh, through his word and his creation, uh, the purpose of how we all coexist uh, with the rest of um, his creation. And the Bible talks about how man's relationship was broken and his purpose of restoring back to him, the plan that he had to restore us. Um, of course, there were challenges, um, one of them being to find time to read 10 chapters sometimes, um, depending on what was happening. But there was that grace to just catch up. You know, instead of reading 10, maybe you read uh, 15 um, a day, um, which was a challenge, but um, we are human at the end of the day. Um, the other challenge was understanding. As you know, some some of the books are very difficult to understand, especially the prophecies. You look at the Ezekiel and uh, finally Revelation. It, they are all very, very difficult. But um, at the end of the day, I think I look at God's purposes being just pointing to Jesus from Genesis. It's all pointing to uh, Jesus Christ as you know, God's love to us, God's gift to us. So as we, you know, go into this uh, new year, renewing our covenant, I'm reminded of um, his blood that was shed uh, for us. And we pray that God's grace will, will be sufficient for us. Amen. Thank you so much, Christine. That, that's such a wonderful encouragement. And I know those people that um, can be watching or later will watch this program and they are challenged to take up that journey through the Bible. Uh, I believe it's as an encouragement to them. So thank you so much, Christine. And we believe that today um, those questions in your heart, in your spirit will be answered through uh, the wisdom of God. So thank you so much for joining us. God bless you. So uh, right now we'd like to go to Professor Kuku from South Africa. Are you there? Um, you want to share a bit about your experience of the journey through the Bible? Yes, I'm there. Can you see me? Yes, we can see you. Good morning. All right. <laughs> Good morning. Um, Happy New Year to everyone. Can you hear me as well? All right. Thank you. Um, my journey started, I think I was praying all along before we even started um, with this journey that I just want to know God deeper. Um, Jesus said, 
I have made you known, God, uh, Father, and I'll continue to make you known. That was that verse when he was praying for the believers. And that was always my deep down wish that, Lord, I want to know you more. And when this uh, journey started, the University of God uh, journey through the Bible started, I just jumped for joy. Um, I think my students thought I was crazy because I thought this is this is it. And I started reading um, with understanding. I, I like that uh, that long sum because most of it is talking about God. I want to understand you. I want to understand you. I know it's a very long sum and people get lost in it. Yes, yeah, hundred and nineteen. Um, it 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 also guided me through that. But as I, I was going through the the, the the Bible, I realized one thing, and um, I like to take walks after reading so that I can reflect on what I have been reading. And I, I, it grew to me in me that actually God is a good God. He likes beautiful things. If you, if you, if you see from the, from the beginning in, in, in Genesis, he created everything and said it was good. And I thought, we are the ones who spoiled it. And if you actually get to understand him more through his word, we would understand that he's a God He's a God of love. And uh, I, I can show you my, my Bible. It's, it's like a crazy thing. Um, it's full of, you know, it's tabs, everything. And um, in the, I also write uh, questions and things that, that I need to reflect. And so my Bible looks like this. Since I started any with it, it, it's a crazy, it's a crazy looking thing. Some of them have got, I so. Um, I've been doing this since up to the revelation. And uh, also when I got to Leviticus, I understood that actually, although it's a difficult book, um, Leviticus, it had a purpose. God wanted to reveal himself and what he wanted. He, he, he is love. He loves beautiful things. But what he says we need to obey, to obedient to his word. Then he's a happy God for us. He's a happy for us. And we are also happy for him. Um, before, every time before I read, I ask the Holy Spirit, because I said, you're the one who wrote this through the people that were obedient to you writing. Just lead me and open up the new gems. Because some of the verses, we have heard them, we have read them, but all, there's always a hidden gem. And each time I read, I find a hidden gem. And um, of late, uh, I found a, a gem that I, I was just so happy. Can I share that with you guys? Just one minute more, because I know many people would still like oh, to share their experience. Yeah, we'll give you just one minute. minute. And, uh, oh, you know, that, 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 that snippet that said, um, if you ask anything in my name, and I will do it. And that has always been like a, a, a question on me. What, what does, it, it sounds simple, but for me, it wanted, it went, I wanted to, 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 it to be revealed. And I realized God, Jesus is the word. So, it, and, the, and the spirit works with the word. So if you ask anything in the name of Jesus, we're asking it according to his word, which is in the Bible. So it will be done if it is done according to, if you ask according to, to his will, the word in the Bible and this, and the spirit will act on that. Hmm. I think that's Amen. You, you've, what a wonderful truth you've highlighted for us today. And thank you so much. We can tell that you're, you're so blessed and it's, it's great to see your Bible. You know, if our Bible is falling apart, we are not. <laughs> because definitely Christ and the Word are one. So that's wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Professor Kuku from South Africa. It's a blessing. And we know that today God will bless you even more as you search deeper into his Word for that revelation of the truth. Thank you so much. So right now, um, we actually want to go to one of our uh, key team members at the University of God. Um, it's a privilege for us to connect with her today, and that's Cindy. So Cindy, are you there? So good to be connected with you. So Cindy, I'm sure many of you, um, if not all of you know Cindy, Evangelist Cindy, who trained under Prophet T.B. Joshua with myself and Racine. What a wonderful journey. and. Uh, now she is a key member of the University of God team and she's been joining with us, joining us on a journey through the Bible. So we'd love to hear your, your experience of this journey. 
Thank you very much. Um, heavenly greetings to all of us, <laughs> to all of you, and the Lord be with our spirit. You know, after I finish with my journey through the Bible, I reflect on this life. And point one that I'm thinking about is that no one can understand the Bible unless the understanding is granted to us by God himself. So as I was going through the journey through the Bible, the understanding just came by the grace of God. And I'm very glad for that. And uh, point two, I realized that um, how many times we made a new year resolution each year. And at the end of the year, we realized that we couldn't maintain that resolution. And one of the most common resolutions that Christians make all over the world is to read our Bible starting from January the 1st, right? <laughs> And um, at the end of the year, uh, let me just talk about this year. At the end of the year, 2022, Prophet Rasin came out and gave us the journey through the Bible assignment that is, I believe, so divine. And um, now, I, now I believe that many Christians out there, together with me, I can be so happy and so bold to say that I have made it in this journey. And thanks be to God for this. And, uh, you know, this assignment has made me personally spend time, spend more time in the presence of God. And that is the best time that we can ever have in this, uh, in this life. And how happy I am to begin this year, 2023, with such a great success. And this has imparted huge strength that indeed, we are made to be successful people. So I thank you, Jesus. Thank you for using a servant to bring us, to bring to us this journey through the Bible assignment. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you so much. What, what an encouragement. And uh, I'm sure all of you know Cindy and you'll be seeing a lot more of her on um, the University of God by the grace of God. The best is yet to come. Thank you so much, Cindy, for joining us. And uh, right now we'd like to go to Mr. Sinju who's actually joining us from Vietnam. Um, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, hello, Mr. Sinju. Yeah, we can hear you. Good morning. So can you tell okay. us about your, your journey through the Bible, how it's impacted you? Okay, yeah. First of all, uh, when the prophet said about the journey through the Bible, when I took the Bible, I look at the size, like, I was scared, you know. <laughs> like, I was really scared. <sighs> How long am I going to use to read through this Bible? And afterwards, I one thing just came to my mind that God speaks through His Word by His Spirit, and God is in His Word. I said, "Well, I have no choice than to go through the Bible." And when I started the journey, I realized you now a change of heart, like. Everything I do, I become alert of everything, like within my environment, with people. It's like there's a judge in me, like I have a judge. Anything I do, like I'm alert of, you know, actually it's like it's, it's something strange to me again. I've never done that. I've, I've never had such experience before. Like doing things, when I talk to people, like. Something just come in, in me that mind the way you thought, like actually it has really helped me a lot. And secondly, it has changed my perception, like the way I used to think. For example, like judging people ignorantly without knowing, you know, for the Bible says not you ought not to judge. For the same measure you use to judge, you yourself will be judged. Like, there were things that I was living ignorantly, without knowing, even like helping people. Like, I, before, you know, I, I was on top, like helping people and receive my outward reward, not knowing that uh, there's a reward waiting for me over there. I, I think it has changed a certain level. And I really want to keep up the faith. Yeah, I like, I've never read some chapters through the Bible 
that like when I read it, I think, wow, there's a lot of knowledge, wisdom hidden in the Bible. And I've discovered that it is genuine. Like in the book of Proverbs, James, many others. I found a lot of wisdom. Everything we need to succeed through the race in the Bible. That's what I discovered. Everything the way we need is here in the Bible. But we never knew. I never knew. Because this was this is actually my first time to have this journey through the Bible. Hmm. Wow. Thank you so much. Uh, for your that that was so heartwarming and sincere you know you said you were scared at the beginning when you looked at the size of the bible but uh, you discovered so many pearls of wisdom so so many uh, st things that brought strength to your life and i really liked what you said about it, it awakened your conscience and made you alert uh, you know that that is why god created us as not as animals with instinct but as as the greatest product of the of the of the holy spirit with a with a conscience to be in direct contact with God. So that's such a wonderful encouragement. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that, Mr. Sinju. And I believe that you'll be even more blessed today. And God bless you for, for completing that journey. Now it's just begun. You continue this journey for the rest of your life with God. God bless you. Thank you. So right now we'd like to join um, Dr. Maxine from the US. Are, are you there? Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you very well. Thank you for joining oh, us. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. For me, this was a phenomenal journey. Finally, not one chapter here, two, two chapters from Psalms. I have tried so many reading plans and they never ever seemed to work because they they just weren't connected so when prophet Racine announced uh, first of all i was just so excited i thought wow and when he explained how he went through this with prophet tb joshua i said how simple is this we all should have you know learned this information a long time ago so for me just going chapter by chapter all the way through seemed very easy so i started and boy, oh boy, did the God of the Bible jump out the pages. And I was, oh, he, he became so real. There were so many things I've been asking myself, pondering. They were just being answered. And I realized that I was walking with this God right there next to me he was here he was you know he was just telling me what i needed to know and everyone should go on this journey everyone in christendom should go on this journey it's worth it hmm. dr maxine you have said it all I, I i love the way you said the god of the bible just jumped out of the pages and you realize you were walking with that god and, and that's it this is there's no state of being that's as rewarding as living in tune with God. And that's why Satan does not want us to read our Bible. <laughs> because uh, the seed of our success, of our future, is in the Bible. Thank you so much for, for that wonderful encouragement. And we know the best is yet to come. We're expecting so many more testimonies. And we know that truly your life will be a blessing to those around you as God is flowing and working through you in Jesus' name. Amen. So... Right now, um, we want to join Judy from Chile, and Judy is actually going to be um, speaking Spanish. So, by the grace of God, we're going to interpret for her. And she's been joining us on the journey through the Bible, and it's blessed her so much. So, Judy, hola, buenos días, gracias por estar con nosotros. Hola, buenos días. Cuéntanos su, su, su experiencia, pero poco a poco para que pueda traducir. <laughs> Ok, <risa> para mí eh, un viaje a través de la Biblia fue realmente un viaje en cada libro. Mm. So uh, Judy said the journey through the Bible has been a journey through each book of the Bible. It's been an individual journey through each book. Eh, este viaje a través de la Biblia me enseñó a conocer a Dios como padre, como amigo, como proveedor. She said this uh, journey through the Bible has, has taught her to know God as her father, as her friend, as her provider. Y sobre todo, eh, algo que me tiene fascinada es que pude leer la Biblia completa 
Siempre me uno a las palabras de la doctora, la había intentado leer, pero nunca la completaba. Y hoy pude completar eh, la Biblia, leerla toda. So she says she was so excited that she was able to actually complete the whole Bible that many times she wondered if she could read the whole Bible, maybe she'll read a chapter or a book here and there, but she was so happy that she was able to read the entire Bible. Algo que marcó mucho, mucho mi, mi viaje a través de la Biblia fue el día 112. ¿Fue qué? ¿Otra vez? Eh, un día que marcó mucho eh, mi viaje a través de la Biblia fue el día 112, donde dice amar a tus enemigos es siempre irrazonable hasta, hasta que te das cuenta de que eres enemigo de Dios y Él te ha perdonado. Ah, ok, ok. So she's talking about um, one, uh, the day that really blessed her in the, in the Bible uh, reading journey was day 112. And uh, you know, each day there's a quote um, of Prophet T.B. Joshua, which is on the Bible reading plan on the post, on the daily reading post. So the quote of that day, of day uh, 112, was um, uh, you, you need to realize that you're, it becomes easier to forgive when you realize that you yourself were an enemy of God before he forgave you. And she said that that quote really touched her heart. Eh, bueno, hemos, eh, yo y mi familia hemos reflexionado mucho acerca de, de lo que habla eh, sobre el Padre nuestro, perdona nuestras ofensas como nosotros perdonamos a quien nos ofende. He aprendido que perdonando y amando podemos conectarnos al corazón de papá, corazón de Dios. And she said that um, this journey through the Bible, she's reflected a lot with her family about the meaning, the words of the Lord's Prayer and what it means to truly forgive those who sin against us. And uh, she said it's only through that, that forgiveness she's been able to realize that she can access the blessings that are in, um, in, in God the Father. Wow. Pero para mí fue un viaje genial y doy gracias a Dios por esta, por esta jornada de un viaje a través de la Biblia. Amen. Gracias, Julie. So she said um, it was such a blessing for her to, to, to join us in this journey through the Bible. Wow, thank you so much for your, your experience. Muchas gracias por tu experiencia, por tu consejo y, y ha sido de bendición y sabemos que Dios te va a bendecir aún más el día de hoy. Gracias. Thank you so much, Judy. It's such a pleasure to speak with you. So right now we actually want to go to John um, from the UK. Um, hi, John. Now, many of you might recognize this face um, if you are familiar with the University of God dramas. Uh, John is actually uh, has the wonderful grace of interpreting Jesus in uh, the, the UOG drama. So just in case you're wondering, I've seen that face before. Yes, you probably have. And John has actually been joining us on the journey through the Bible and it's blessed him immensely. So, John, tell us, how, how has it impacted you? Oh, hi Ruth, hi Ruth. Um, hi everybody. Yeah, wow. Um, such an amazing uh, experience going through the Bible um, with, with this ministry. I, I, obviously, I love this ministry. Um, it's fantastic. It's such a prophetic fulfillment for me personally. But um, yeah, to walk through the ministry, um, uh, reading the Bible with Racine's challenge of um, the 10 chapters a day, My first impression, the, the challenge was, 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 was laid down. And obviously, and it was an amazing kind of reflection as well when he, when he shared about T.B. Joshua mentioning about four, you know, 40 chapters a day, you can read it in a month, the Bible. It's like, wow, um, maybe as, as, I, as, as I grow, as, as we grow, we could do that. <laughs> But 10 chapters a day we went for. And um, yeah, I, I started steady um, and then kind of, a few ups and a few downs in terms of sometimes doing more, sometimes doing a bit less. But what I found was this Bible reading, I mean, really set a precedent for my life in terms of what I have to take forward. I just, I read the Bible before. I've read the New Testament over quite a few times and I've probably read most of the books in, in, in the scripture. Maybe some of the old, the, the prophets I've not read, but to read it from cover to cover, Um, was it was a, was an amazing challenge and I just found myself thinking yeah this has to go forward I have to f feed more I have to feed more on the word of God um, 
I have to take the word of God into my heart and basically to grow up and grow spiritually. Um, there's a saying that I've, I've heard come across um, funnily in like a natural sense from um, people who train and do bodybuilding. And they said that if you want to eat, you have to eat big to grow big. And it's like, it's true. You have to eat more by the, more of God's word to grow big in the spirit. And so it's true. That's what I, um, I kind of, we have to do this now. I, I have to do this personally. Um, so I also, sh I'll just share another experience of um, just, a, just a, the form of discipline in what's reading the scripture. I've got so many parts in the Bible now, which are kind of highlighted and revelations come. And what I kind of felt led to do by the Holy Spirit was to transfer this across into a notebook for kind of, extra meditation so as you go as i found myself going through the scripture i found parts speaking to me really deeply or um yeah just personally and i would transfer this across into a, another notebook and just kind of i'm going to spend time reading i mean there was those books like isaiah that i wish i could have stayed in for yeah i just could have stayed, but, but we had to forge through but so i'll be going back to isaiah but um a real scripture that kind of stood out to me was that Psalm 4 verse 4. It says, um, stand in awe and sin not. Meditate in your own heart upon your bed and be still. And so, um, yeah, I just kind of, that principle of just uh, what Brasine and Ruth has been trying to teach, you guys have been trying to teach us, which is that you need to meditate on the word of God. Um, and yeah, you can do that on your bed. You can do that every moment it's fine um so yeah it, it's an awesome privilege to be involved with, to be obviously to be part of the ministry um it, it, i just thank god um and so yeah that's my kind of experience uh, my kind of covenant going forward is just to obviously read the word daily to meditate and uh, and yeah and uh, i have a few other reflections but i'll keep those uh, <laughs> I'm sure. Thank you, thank, you so. thank you so much, John. Wow, that I, I really liked what you said about the practical thing about when you're going through, you highlight them and then pass them to a notebook. And that's so true because, you know, there's so much food there. And like, you know, where you likened it to the uh, analogy of, you know, bodybuilding, you know, if, if you want, this is a spiritual food that God has given us. And yet, uh, we keep wondering why, you know, we, 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 we resist, we, we fail to resist temptation and we keep falling, falling back is because we're not strengthening our spiritual life, our spiritual man inside of us, the real you, as uh, Prophet T.B. Joshua used to tell us. So, wow, thank you so much. That's a real, a real blessing and an encouragement. And we know that this is a covenant that we're taking forward in the next year, in this year that we're in now, 2023, to continue in God's word. Thank you so much, John. God bless. And uh, definitely we'll see more of you by God's grace. So right now we're going to Lily, just have time for a few more because we know that you're here to hear answers to your questions. So we just have time for just a few more. There's so many people that wanted to, to share their experience, but we just have time for two more, I think. So Lily's joining us from Indonesia. Thank you, Lily, for joining us. And can you tell us your experience on the, the journey through the Bible? Heavenly greetings in Jesus' name. I'm so happy to be part of this meeting. Frankly speaking, the first time I heard 10 chapters a day, it sounded like mission impossible to me. Even so, I made up my mind to do my best to accomplish it. And by God's grace, today I can boldly say mission, mission accomplished. Thank you, Jesus. Well, as I went through chapter by chapter each day, I always took time to jump down the verses that spoke straight to my heart for me to ponder further. Yes, many times I came across verses that answer the question I had in my heart. It's true what Prophet Rasin once said, that God hides himself. Yes, God hides himself behind the pages, behind the letters in the Bible. So this journey through the Bible has blessed me so, and therefore I would like to say to thank Prophet Rasim for giving us this assignment. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Prophet Rasim. Amen. Thank you so much, Lily. And uh, I love the way you said that 
what a challenge you saw the 10 chapters but you've done that mission uh, impossible and it's just an encouragement that when you set your mind to do something with the help of god you can do it and and uh, there's so much treasure there and we, we we can see the joy of god in your life thank you so much and we know the best is yet to come for the year ahead god bless you thank you i can see so many of you from from different countries and i know that so many people want to share their experience you've been blessed and Definitely your life is a reflection of the blessing of God uh, in what you read in the Bible. So thank you so much. So right now we want to take um, some time to listen to some people who have questions. We know all of you submitted questions. Um, most of you submitted questions that have been uh, maybe bothering your mind or you, you, you'd like to just find out from God what God is saying through different parts of the scripture and by the grace of God we will have time for some of those questions today to be answered as the Spirit directs and if your question was not answered today, answered today don't worry because this is the first of many sessions by the grace of God you know when we when the vision of the University of God was was given to us by God that was one of uh, the points in in our mission and vision if you look at that original video um, that was a release on the 19th of June 2021 you'll see that we said that we want to have interactive question and answer sessions um, which delve deeper into the word of god we know that questions and, and answers play such a big role in our learning and uh, we thank you all for the sincerity of your hearts in submitting those questions um, from your hearts and uh, we know that um, the grace of god to answer some of those questions today all wisdom and knowledge comes from god and uh, we believe that these questions and answers will benefit you as much as us and the, everyone else who will learn as well along with us. So we want to invite God, the Holy Spirit, the divine teacher first into this question and answer session. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Wow, you have made it. All of you, you have crossed the journey through the Bible with the grace of God. You know, the Bible says that decide what you want and how to do it will emerge if you choose your direction god will give you the energy for the distance what seems impossible has become a reality glory be to god so congratulations to all of you what i want to say that how do we know god we cannot we can't know god by our feelings by our emotion but through his word by his spirit so congratulations to all of you, and by the grace of God, with the humility and the grace of the Holy Spirit, we are going to provide an answer to your questions. Remember, man has the ability to teach, but the Holy Spirit teaches as he wills. He's the spirit of revelation. We depend on him to give us the divine meaning of the Bible. Since the Bible is a letter inspired by the Spirit, and the scripture says that no scripture can be an object of personal interpretation of man. As the Spirit inspired, the Spirit must carry you along to give you the divine meaning of the Bible. So with His grace, we are here to answer your questions as the Holy Ghost directed with His wisdom in Jesus' name. Once again, congratulations. You have made a big step. I just want to give a short testimony before we start quickly that one day in 2004, a prophet Jesus says in the church, if you read 40 chapters per day, you finish the Bible in one month. And he said, who will do it? Everybody raised their hand. And I said, wow, 40 chapters per day. And I venture into the journey every day, 40 chapters per day. And I really made it. And after the end of 29 days, the whole Bible was finished. And God opened my mind to the scriptures. You know, we have a role to pray. When you follow instruction in righteousness, obedience to his word, God will meet you at the point of revelation and understanding. It's just humility. Thank you for being there. And I pray that this year, God will channel you. His word will channel you through your life to build the faith, to make you mature in Christian. So you know how to stand, how to face every circumstance of life with the help of the Holy Spirit. He's our guide. He wants to know us. He wants to lead us. But he does nothing without his word. You are not the one looking for him. He's the one looking for you. He's a shepherd. So thank you once again. And you're welcome in Jesus' name. Okay, I think we can go to the first question. Yes, thank you so much. So um, yeah. we want to go to Mr. Dulamond Christophe from the US, um, who has mm -hmm. a question for Racine. Are you there, Mr. Dulamond? 
Hello, thanks for joining yes. us. Good morning, my brother. You're welcome. Good morning. Thank you. Good to see you. <laughs> okay, I'm listening to your question. Yes, yeah, so my question is, how do we differentiate the difference between the voice of our spirit and the voice of the spirit of God in our hearts? My question is twofold. So how do we differentiate the, the voice of our spirit between the voice of the spirit of God in our heart? And second, if we are unable to differentiate the difference, could it, is it fair to say that it's due to our lack of commitment to the word, to reading the word of God and meditating on his word? Okay. Thank you very much for your question. I think it's a question that interests the whole world. That's the key. This is the heart of the matter. Anytime I meet people, like, how, do I, how do God speak? How do I know God speaks? So before we start that question, let me take you quickly to the book of Job. Chapter 33, I read my Bible from verse 14. It says, For God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive it. Verse 15, in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon man while slumbering on their beds, then he opens the ears of man and seals the instruction. Amen. Today we have, the problem we have is when man speaks, some say God is speaking. Because not just because the person has talent, eloquent speak doesn't mean God is the one speaking. The question, how do we discern the voice of God? That's the question you're asking. And I will give you one clue in the book of Romans chapter 9, verse 1. Paul said, I speak the truth. I am not lying. My conscience is bearing witness to the spirit. So many today continue to hear the voice of man. While many hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, the difference to that is how you apply the word of God in your heart rightfully. Our conscious, I mean not our carnal kind of mind, our conscious is the instrument of God for discerning his voice, for discerning spiritual things. So when the Holy Ghost speaks to us, he doesn't speak here, he speaks to our heart. And the question, how do we have awareness to discern that that voice, that thought is from God or from man, right? So the difference is when man speaks to you, nothing happens. But when the Holy Ghost speaks to you, changes are beginning. He never speaks in vain. So now if your the state of your mind is vital in discerning that voice. So when we say that, mainly a thought may come to you. You say, is it from God or is it from me? What is the source of that thought? Is it your circumstances? Remember, our natural senses points to the outside. And the Bible says that a Christian should be careful of what he's looking at. Because what he's looking at can influence his thought. A Christian should be careful of what he hears. What he hears can influence his thought. The question now, how do we check whether that thought is from God or otherwise? And remember, there are three influences. Influence from man, from God, and from the enemy. That is it. So our heart, our mind is the communication point, contact point for the Holy Spirit, as well as the spirit of the devil. Satan suggests our mind to always think what is right, what is wrong. Whereas the Holy Ghost suggests your heart to do what is right in the sight of God. So now you need to educate your conscience. You need to train your conscience in order to be able to discern where the voice comes from. You remember in 1 Samuel chapter 3, the young prophet at the beginning of his inauguration of his prophetic service, he was sleeping and he heard a voice. Somebody stood and ran to Eli immediately. He said, ah, you call me. He said, no, no, I did not call you, my son. Go and lie down. He went to lie down. And the God came again and said, someone, someone. He stood up and ran to Eli and said, you called me. He said, no, I have not called you. The Bible says in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 7, that Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. That's a key sentence. He did not know the Lord because his word was not revealed to him. So the only way we, could, we know God today, we know God through his word, by his spirit. That's the combination. Through his word, 
by his spirit. So when the third time God came and called someone again, he ran to his master and said, no, next time you hear this voice, don't run to me. Say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. That's exactly what Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20 says. My son, attend to my words. Keep them in the midst of your heart for their life to those who find it. And that's the issue. Our heart, that's, that's the contact point, the landing point of the Holy Spirit. So it takes a discerning spirit, a discerning heart, understanding heart to know where the voice comes from, your spirit or from your mind. And you can know if you are sensitive to it. What we need to do is to educate our conscience, to refresh our mind. So when a thought comes, you will be able to quickly examine the thought. Is it from me? With the source? Okay, for example, you watch something or you have a discussion with somebody and you're thinking about it, your thought may be influenced. And you have to be careful because man exercises the way through his mind. We can have influence from our own heart. What I mean by that? Influence from your spirit. Influence from your own mind. So when a thought comes, I need to examine that thought quickly before acting on it. Is it me? Is it for my emotion? Is it for my mind or for my heart? And to do that, the only way to achieve that is to begin to discipline your mind through the word of God. The right channel is to meditate. Then you can examine the thought. Your conscience will ring. When you hear a voice from the Holy Spirit, your conscience will bear witness. You know, by the prophet said, when you're reading the Bible, sometimes you read a portion of the Bible and your heart is bearing witness. You know, that it is God speaking to me. So the influence from the devil is that it can bring thoughts of resentment, condemnation, or judgment. Don't act on that word immediately. You analyze it in the light of God's word. So the right how to do yourself before you be, uh, to avoid being influenced by the by the information from the outside, you need to meditate. When you meditate on the word of God, revelation come. Meditation will refresh your mind, and revelation come from the spirit. And when it comes, your heart will testify that this is from God speaking. That's why when you read the Bible, it's highly advised to read it louder. When you read louder, you capture your thoughts because your sense of sight is very powerful. You're concentrating on the Bible and you're hearing your own speaking error already. So you capture your sight, you capture your ears and you focus on the word. So it is your rightful focus on the word, hearing and obeying, meditating in your heart that brings the revelation of the word. When the spirit of God speaks to your heart, you know it's the voice of authority straight from your spirit. And your spirit will ring. Your conscience will ring. And then you know, yes, it is God. And you will be able to discern what comes from you or what comes from man. So we have to be very, very careful in this because we want God's thought, not our thought. We want the influence of the Holy Ghost, not influence from our own flesh. So it is important to do away with our own thought as we prepare to hear the voice of God by getting our heart in tune with the living word of God. And that's the essence. So what do you do? Meditation is a key. When you meditate the word of God, your mind is refreshed. Your mind is set. Your mind is at its best. That's why we don't rush into prayer by saying our own words. When you sit down, sit back in silence and begin to meditate, then you will receive revelation from God. That revelation is called the inward you receive truth, the deep thoughts of Christ, right deep into your heart. And that's what we have to do today. That's why you see many people, many prophets, they go to the wilderness. They cut off from the influence of the outside in order to be able to concentrate, to think deep in silence and listen to what God has to say. That is it. And very often, the Spirit of God really come upon you when they begin to give you inspiration. Your heart will tell you, the conviction of your heart will tell you that this is truly from God. We learn to discern his voice as we hear and obey and meditate in the word of God. That's the state of your mind. So in conclusion, our state of mind matters so much. It is directly influenced by our focus. It is not our mere wishful thinking, but rightful focus. So when you focus and your mind as best refreshed by the word of God, as the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 1, your mind is renewed. And number one, don't forget what spoils the heart is offense and unforgiveness. So when your heart is disturbed, you have first to remove the weight, the wall between your heart and the spirit of God. 
but I make sure you make sure you forgive everybody. When your heart is at rest, when you meditate till your heart is at rest, then you begin to sense the signal of the spirit. Your conscious begin to wake because our conscious sleeps when we think negative. When we are influenced by the things of the outside and we react, our conscious is sleeping. But when our conscious is awakened by, this, by, the, by the word of God, refreshed by the word of God, you will hear. God's word refreshes our mind and God's spirit renew our strength. And then you're able to discern that this is truly God speaking to us. Don't forget, faith is a conviction. What is that conviction? Something we tell in your heart, don't go there. And the conviction is so strong. When the spirit acts on it, you realize, it. yes, that's what God wants me to do. So my brother, we need to capture our thought in order to discern the thoughts of God in your heart. That's the key. And it implies to meditate on the word of God day and night. That's the best way to renew your mind. Reading your Bible aloud by making sure you, you read it loud and then will reset your mind. After you finish reading, you meditate on it. When you meditate on it, you will hear God clearly. And that's the key. So we don't act immediately on a thought. Make sure that thought is aligned with the scriptures. And that is the key. And Holy Ghost guide us to think right, to speak right, and to act right. It's everyday job. That's why the Bible says, pray without ceasing. Meditate all the time. The revelation will come any moment. So we need to discipline our heart to educate our mind with the word of God through meditation. By doing so, you are training, educating your mind to concentrate on the things of the spirit. And when the voice comes, you will know this is God because you attract the presence of the Holy Spirit. His voice is so clear and your conscience will bear witness that this is from God. It will ring. Words of man can never make your conscience ring. But words of God may your concern to ring. And that's the argument that is God speaking to you. And that you will know. So please dedicate your heart to the word of God and discipline your mind by meditating on the word of God continually. That's how you set your mind. So there's a word of wisdom, Prophet Tibisha taught us. I said, yielding our heart over to the word makes the word a reality. Yielding our heart to the Holy Spirit makes the word of the Holy Ghost a reality in your heart. And when the word becomes a reality in you, you become God-minded and word-minded. Meaning your mind is renewed. You think the thoughts of God and your mind is refreshed according to the Spirit of God. That's the only way. The answer, meditation in the word of God. And that's what we all lack. We read the Bible, but we need to sit back in silence and listen to what God had to say. That's the only way to reset your mind to be in tune of God, to hear when God speaks. And when it comes, your mind will say, yes, this is God. Sometimes you do, there are some actions you may do in your life. You, this conviction, you say, yes, I want to do this. You are determined. That's how the spirit works, work, by conviction of your heart. So we should learn to listen to the voice of the Holy Ghost in our conscience by disciplining, educating our mind, by meditating in the word of God. And that's the key. That's the only way the thoughts of God can become a reality. You are able to discern what is from God, what is not from God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow, um, there are so many pearls of wisdom in that answer. I know that has blessed you, um, Mr. Mr. Dulamond. And you know, don't worry if you think this is too fast. I can't write everything down because you'll be able to watch, rewatch this session, take notes, um, you know, meditate over it, go over the, the, the hidden treasures there. And uh, I really liked what Racine said about identifying the weight on your spirit. Um, that is so important to do so you can be sensitive to the spirit of God. So thank you so much. Um, that question and answer has blessed us all immensely. And we want to go to the next person now who is uh, from Philippines, Miguela. Um, her question was really speaking in the mind of so many people, I think. Um, uh, so we'd like to hear from you um, the question that's in your heart. Good morning, and we win today. Uh, my question, sir, that how to pray without ceasing? Because when I read the Bible, uh, it comes in my heart how to pray without ceasing. Because when we say pray without ceasing, sometimes trouble comes and so many temptation, and we can stop, and then again we do it. So my question is that how to pray without ceasing? That's the deepest part of my heart. Thank you. Thank you very much. So to answer that question, you know, we have two types of prayer. 
and uh, we are used to using our natural faculties, our mouth to pray to God. We do every day. So we enter his presence, we pray, we ask, and after we stop. But the scripture says, pray without ceasing. Prayer without ceasing has to do with spirit prayer. Your mouth can pray, but God says, these people come to me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In Matthew chapter 15, verse 8. The only way to pray without ceasing is to pray with your spirit. Because your spirit never sleeps. Your spirit never, never, never sleeps. So prayer without ceasing is you engage your spirit, you engage your heart. Heart means spirit, not our mouth. Because when we engage the body, we got tired. But when we are in the spirit, it's first an attitude. We need to understand that prayer is first an attitude of the heart. Whenever you are meditating in the word of God, in your, deep in your heart, whenever you are thinking right, meditating the word of God, then you are praying, your spirit is praying. The greatest prayer is meditation. It's your spirit that prays. That's why in the beginning, the prophet gave us this, this bracelet. Is to train. It doesn't just happen. It's, it's a lifestyle. It's an exercise. You need to train yourself. You, it must be fully part of you. Prayer is inbuilt. I mean, it's our spirit, our heart that pray. Our heart is a prayer room. And to pray without ceasing, you need the help of the Holy Spirit. He prays within us. Even at night when you speak, when you sleep, your body is at rest. But your heart, your mind, your, the divine nature of God in your spirit is receiving dreams, is speaking to God. So in the day, when we train, when we discipline our heart to concentrate on the things that are from above, we are in the of Christ. Anytime we are in the of Jesus to think right, to do what is right, you are praying. Anytime you sing hymns in your spirit, you are praying. And your spirit is praying all the time. When your heart is in tune with the spirit of God, you pray in all occasions. We don't pray only because we go to church on Sunday or you go to your prayer room at home. You can pray anywhere. That's the meaning. In your office, you can pray. But nobody sees your mouth moving or your, your, in your face. But in your, deep in your heart, you are thinking deep the thoughts of Christ. You are talking to God because God dwells within you. The Spirit of God prays within us. Amen? Even when you are taking your bath, anywhere you are, you can engage your spirit. Nobody knows you are praying, but God knows you are praying. So our heart is the landing point. Our heart is the prayer room. The only way is to meditate in the Holy Bible. That's what God said to Joshua chapter 1. Meditate on the word day and night. Take, take note. Day and night. God knows that Joshua at night may be sleeping, but your spirit is not sleeping. Sometimes you woke up early in the morning and you sense your spirit is singing or praying. And that is it. So when our heart and you know, our mind are filled with the word of God, you will speak that word, you will think that word at all times. So when we yield our heart to the word of God and you become word-minded, in the morning when you wake up, your spirit starts naturally praying, right? So prayer is a thing of the heart, a thing of the spirit. The spirit of God in us helps us to cry out, Abba, Father, naturally, to pray naturally is the thing of your mind. Meditate on the word of God and speak to God in silence, deep inside your heart. And God listens. So if you train your heart, to focus on the things of the above, prayer will become a natural thing as breathing. That's what we need to achieve. And for that to happen, you have to go through the process. Take more of me, give me more of you, oh Holy Spirit. Take more of me, give me more of you in your heart, in your heart, in your heart, in your heart, till it becomes a part of you. Amen? It cannot just happen. It, it, it requires discipline. That's why when you have the faith bracelet or your Bible, anything on the outside that can help you to remember God, your relationship with God, then whatever you do, you do it with the Savior first in your mind. You think about Jesus. You hear something, you think about Jesus. You want to do everything in the light of God's word. So when you are in the attitude of Christ Jesus, you are in the attitude of prayer. So we need to tune our heart with God, ready to receive from him by meditating, by praying, singing hymns in your spirit, in your heart. Once you get used to it, it becomes a part of you. So you start praying everywhere. We are driving, you are praying. While talking, you are driving. Because there are two channels, this one and this one. 
So once your heart and mind are disciplined and the Holy Ghost takes over, you can pray anyway, anytime. That's the prayer without ceasing. Hello? So, yes, it requires a dedication, God is spirit prayer, cooperating with the Holy Spirit. You read your Bible every day and meditate. You can take a verse, meditate on it, meditate on it, meditate on it, or say, thank you, Jesus. Just thank you, Jesus. It's prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Anything you see, anything you hear, you say, what Jesus will do, what Jesus will say. You pray, thank you, Jesus. To sit down, thank you, Jesus. To walk, thank you, Jesus. At all times, the Bible says, give thanks to God at all times. Use prayer and supplication. Let your heart be tuned to the Lord because he is our helper. We don't have any help of our own. Just by sitting calmly, thinking about Jesus, what is right is prayer. It's not just asking words. It's an attitude of prayer, attitude of faith, attitude of Christ Jesus. Then you're able to pray anyway. While working, while in the kitchen, anyway. Learn to discipline our heart by thinking the deep thoughts of Christ. And that is prayer. And God hears that prayer. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, there's something I always remember the prophet T.B. Joshua said, uh, said to us. Um, and he said that prayer is intention, the intention of your heart. You know, it's not about just saying words, saying words, saying words, but it's arresting your heart with the, with the thought of God. And that's, that's a 24 hour assignment. Uh, you know, every time your heart you know, goes a bit out, bring it back, bring it back to the word of God, arrest your heart with the word of God. And that, that is the intention of your heart, the consciousness of Christ's presence within you all the time. And that is prayer. That is being in an attitude of prayer at all times. Um, thinking of, of your Savior first. And uh, thank you for that practical question, Miguela. I know that it has blessed so many people. And once again, don't worry if you, if you didn't catch everything that Racine said, we will upload yes, this, this meeting. I, I, yes, just want to add something that, remember we said at the beginning of the year, Psalm 23 is the pattern of thinking. Once you learn it by heart, you begin to meditate it in your heart all the time. Meditate the verse all the time. Meditate it. It's prayer. And while you are meditating, you attract the presence of the Holy Spirit. That's the attitude of prayer. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. And uh, thank you so much. So right now we want to go to uh, Jalette, who's in the UK. Um, Jalette, are you there? She's joining us from the UK. Oh, hello. Yes. So your, your question really touched our heart um, because it was, it was a really sincere question about wanting to know Jesus. So can we hear from you? What's your question? Yes, uh, my question is, as I said, I have heard about Jesus Christ and I read my Bible, I pray, I fast, but I'm still longing for that relationship with Jesus. I feel I don't have it. So how do I get to where I, I will say, I know Jesus? And when I pray, I believe that Jesus answers my question. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. To answer that question, I will go to John chapter 16. I will write from, let me read from verse 10. John 16. Let me open my Bible. That will help us to answer that question. Yes. Jesus said in verse 10, uh, it's up from verse 6 even. He said to his disciples that when the Holy Spirit comes, he will convict the world of sin, of righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no more, and of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judge. You know, we have to Christ. We have the Christ of history, the Christ of the Bible. We know the Bible has given information about Jesus, his birth, his ministry, how he was crucified, how he was resurrected, and ascended to heaven. We have facts. Knowing facts about Jesus is going to change our lives, right? We can have passion for Jesus, know Jesus intellectually by reading the Bible, etc. But we should not forget there's Jesus resurrected Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus, when he resurrected, you remember, after walking with his disciples for three years, 
They knew him in bodily form. Peter saw him. They touched him. They saw him. And the Lord said to them, well, I'm going to Jerusalem. They will crucify me. They will kill me on the third day. I will resurrect. When Jesus said that, they couldn't understand what he was saying, really. But when Jesus was crucified and laid down to the tomb, many of them, despite all what Jesus said to them before, did not believe in the resurrection. Right. Because they have never experienced that. So what happens on the way to Emmaus when Jesus met the two disciples who were so downcast because they think the end has come. Jesus came, appeared in a different form and began to tell him, what's happened to you? Why are you sad? They say, ha, huh, have you not heard what happened to Jerusalem? How Jesus was crucified? We thought he was in the restore our hope. And for them, the end has finished. They only see Jesus in the natural. But Jesus is not an earthly man. Jesus is the Lord, the man from heaven. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 47. When Jesus came on earth, God came. He's the word. He's the Lord. But many people followed him when they saw the miracle he did. He performed in the book of John chapter 2. That Jesus said, he did not put his trust in man. He know what is in the heart of man. Who really know who he is. So when he met Nathaniel, he said, ah, this is the man in whom there is no, no fraud. How do you know me? He said, when you were in the fig tree, I saw you. And he said, ah, you are the son of God. Jesus said, you will see greater things than that. So the question is, what Jesus said about him? In John 8, 23, he said, you are from this world. I am not of this world. You are from under, I am from above. So Jesus is a mystery in itself. It requires the revelation of the Holy Ghost to know who Jesus was, who Jesus is, because still alive. So to know Jesus resurrected, Jesus in the power of the Holy Ghost, it requires the Holy Ghost because Jesus is spirit. He has resurrected, he's in heaven and the Bible filled the heavens and the earth. So when you call the name Jesus today, you don't see Jesus, Holy Spirit comes. Because he said, I will give you another comforter, the spirit of truth, who is with you, he will be in you. So now, how do you know Jesus? We can only know Jesus through the word by his spirit. That's why all the apostles said the ministry of the word. They were bearing witness of the word of his resurrection. That's why they preached the gospel. So the question is, you, you have the heart desire to know the Lord, and that's very pure, and Jesus knows that. But to know Jesus, you have to go through the right way, through the word, by his spirit. When you read the Bible, when you read your New Testament, and you pray in your heart to understand the Spirit of God will give you revelation because the only relationship between Jesus and us is through his word by his spirit. We can never know him by feelings. The only way to know him is by the word of God. And Jesus is real. Jesus speaks to us. How? Jesus speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. And how does the Holy Ghost speak to us in our heart? And now that's the key. To know Jesus, you must know the Holy Spirit. And you can only know Jesus as long as the Spirit of God reveals him to you. Saul rejected the gospel and condemned the gospel and persecuted the Christians because he had sense knowledge of Christ. People look at him, but you look, ah, is he not the son of Mary, the son of Joseph? How can you say you are from God? You are from above. But on his way to Damascus, Jesus met him at the point of revelation. And his eyes were open, eyes of faith open. Who are you, Lord? I'm Jesus, whom you persecute. And then revelation comes. So this is the key. To develop your relationship with Jesus, because you can't see him anymore with naked eyes, but you can see Jesus in the spirit. You can hear him in the spirit. So when you meditate in the word of God about Jesus, revelation comes. What is revelation? The word of Christ will come. He will speak to you through the Holy Spirit. Your conscience will be. God will speak to us through his word, by his spirit. And that is it. And when the disciples were walking Acts chapter 2, you can see that they knew Jesus. Because they knew Jesus, they knew the Holy Spirit. And that's the spirit of Father that speaks through him. 
So whenever you call Jesus, it's the Holy Spirit that speaks. Jesus speaks to us through the Spirit of Father, and the Holy Ghost speaks to us through our heart, through our conscience. So knowing Jesus is knowing the Holy Ghost, and that knowledge is divine revelation through your heart. Your heart, your spirit is a communication point, contact point with Jesus. When you think right, when you speak right, you can perceive his voice. You can perceive the thoughts of the Spirit in your heart. That's how we know Jesus. Not by feelings, by faith. And then you can have practical experience that you hear, you pray, and God answers your prayer. It is true. We can only know Jesus through his holy words. Jesus speaks through the word of the Holy Ghost, revealing his mind on a certain matter and giving us a promise. And his promise isn't failing. Amen. So when you pray to the Father in the name of Jesus, you fellowship with him through his word by spirit. That's the only way we can know Jesus in spirit and in truth not in our emotions. So with the heart desire you have, that's what God wants. If your heart desire is to know him for salvation's sake, then he will meet you at the point of his spirit. And then you develop your relationship with him daily by reading your Bible, meditating, giving thanks to Jesus. Remember, he's our life. In him we live, in him we move, and have our being. You know, when your heart is so soaked with Jesus, say, Jesus, 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 he's the object of our faith. He's the vine and we are the branches. So our life comes from him. So make sure your thought, think about Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Give thanks to him. Ask him to give you strength. You to give you strength. You pray in his name. Whatever you ask in my name, I will see to it. It is done. We have access to God through him by his spirit. That's why he say, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. What's the way? His word. What's the truth? The revelation of the Holy Spirit to tell you who Jesus is, what is his mind, what is the life. The life is eternal life through his word, by his spirit. So please, Jesus is close to you, very close to you, to your heart, to your spirit. That's where you perceive, that's where you have the revelation with him. Remember, that's why he came through his blood to remove the barrier between our spirit and him. Because Jesus is spirit, you too, you have a spirit. And that's your spirit that can connect to Jesus. Not your mind, not your flesh, your spirit. Once the Holy Ghost comes in you, you have contact with it. When you pray to the Father, the word comes. When you pray to Jesus, it's the Holy Spirit. So today, the only means of growth in our Christian life of knowledge of Jesus is the Holy Spirit. Because Christ and the Word are one. Wow, thank you. <laughs> what a, what an amazing answer. And, and, and we really want to appreciate you for your question because that's what it's all about, knowing Jesus. Um, that is what it's all about. And, and it, you know, like the Bible says in Matthew, you know, we don't want to be in a situation on that last day when, when we say, I did this in your name, I did this in your name. And Jesus says, I never knew you. So that is a key question that you've asked, a question of the heart about knowing Jesus. And it's such a comfort. Um, to me, um, what Prophet T.B. Joshua said and is about to seek the kingdom of God is to have the kingdom of God. If we continue to seek God's kingdom, seek the presence of Jesus in our heart, we have the presence of Jesus in our heart. And that is the greatest miracle. So never stop seeking, never stop wanting to know Jesus more. And uh, because the closer we get to Jesus, the more we realize how undeserving of his presence we are. So it's a wonderful journey. We're on the journey of, of, of seeking to know Jesus more. And uh, like Racine said, it's, it's being conscious of his presence, his voice, um, his desire, his will and everything um, that we do. So God bless you. Thank you for that question. And I know that uh, the answer has been a great um, blessing to everyone. So right now we want to go to Viloe, I hope I pronounced that right, in South Africa, um, who has a question. And I believe many people can relate to this question, um, especially in uh, church today. So, hello, Willoway, so nice to see you. So, what's your question? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, morning sir. Hello. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, yes, so as I was reading through uh, the Bible, when I got to 1 Corinthians 14, it, um, it uh, prompted my heart again uh, many years ago. I was part of a charismatic church um, and uh, in there I was prayed for and I received the gift of praying in tongues and um, uh, up, well back then we prayed in tongues and um, 
so forth. And then um, I started following uh, Scohan back then and the seven man of God, Prophet David Joshua. And during those years, um, uh, uh, for instance, we, there was instances where uh, people were delivered from demonic spirits and, uh, and, and that person, when he is being delivered, is actually praying in tongues. And the man of God mm. back then also spoke that and, um, about it. And, and then I, I actually stopped praying in that tongues because, you know, I saw there's more to this than what, what my revelation of it was back then. Um, so, but uh, lately I've been thinking again about it. Um, I can still, you know, by a cognitive decision, start to pray in the tongue now, but um, I'm not sure what to do with that now. Um, yes, I think I, I, if I can put it like that, yeah. Hmm. So I, I, I want to say something about it. In First Corinthians chapter 14, Thank you for your question. I think it's a question that interests a lot of people. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 39, you say, Brethren, desire earnestly to prophesy, or do not forbid to speak the tongues. So it's Paul that exhorted the church to speak in tongues. Speaking in tongues is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And today, I still believe the Bible means the same yesterday, today, and forever. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 7 to 11, the Bible describes the gifts of the Spirit of the Father to edify the church. And among these gifts are word of knowledge, word of wisdom, prophecy, faith, tongues, interpretation of tongues. Now, the issue of tongues is Paul has addressed it very well in the chapter 14 you mentioned. So I want to start by saying this. Let me go to the scriptures that help us to shed a clear light. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, Paul said, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I'm becoming a sounding brass. So when he mentioned two things there. Tongues of angels and tongues of men. And that's really what I want to say. What is the difference between them? We have recalled angelic tongues, and the Bible says there are mysteries. It is a language that only heaven understands, except the person who has the gift of interpretation of the tongue. It is important to understand that in tongues of angel, they are prompted by the Holy Spirit. It's not the person that started, it's the Spirit of God that prompts the person to speak directly to God. And when you speak in tongues, Paul say, my understanding is unfruitful because my spirit is speaking to God directly. It bypasses this mind, this understanding. So only you and God understand that speaking in tongues. We are talking to God. And therefore, Paul say, he who speaks in tongues is under the influence of the Holy Ghost, speaking mystery to God. And no one understands what he says. It's the spirit of God that gives him utterances. So, when Paul addressed the issue of tongues in the church, and that's another issue in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, he said, I will read, and that's very, very important to understand that, chapter 14, verse 2. Okay, Paul said, He who speaks in the tongue does not speak to man, but to God, and no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. In verse 4, he says, that he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, he, he's, he's speaking to God directly. He's not speaking to man, but he edifies himself. And that's what I want to say. He said, he who speaks in tongue edifies himself. The question, how can I edify myself? If I don't understand, what does the edification mean? And Paul gives us a clue by saying, okay, in verse for he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. So when you are speaking prophecy, you are using the language of man. You are speaking French, you are speaking African, so anybody around you understand what you are saying. You are speaking with your human understanding, your human faculty, your brain. And people understand what you say. You are speaking language of, language of man. That's what happened in Pentecost. At Pentecost, they were speaking language of man. They were speaking French, they were speaking Arabic, all those languages, but those utterances came by the 
power of the Holy Spirit. So the question is, the great question that needs sincerity of heart and mind is how can somebody really edify himself if he does not understand what he's saying? And that's the question. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 10, he said, there are, it may be, so many languages in the world, but none of them is without signification. It has a meaning. Speaking tongues has a meaning. What's the meaning? If you speak in tongues and somebody is sick and is healed, that's the meaning of the language. So that's Christian Paul say, the person who had a gift of interpretation of the language, understand it. Paul understand it. That's why he said, I prefer to speak with my understanding. The question is, with the gift of interpretation of tongues through the guidance of the Holy Spirit to give you utterances, using your human faculties, English by human understanding, you can understand. Because you hear yourself when you speak in tongues, but you don't understand what you're saying. But if you speak the tongues of men, you hear yourself there's a prophecy. So contrary to angelic tongues, where the understanding and the mind is bypassed, this time, the Holy Spirit will use your human faculties, including your understanding, so that the people around you understand what you are speaking in Africa. For example, okay, there's a person next to you, and you have the gift of tongues, and God will send a message to the church, and you speak, the person is a Chinese, doesn't understand what you're saying. All of a sudden, you speak Chinese by the utterance of the Holy Spirit. But the person who hears you, God has you your human understanding. So when you speak that word, the person that receives the message understands what you are saying. That's what happened in Pentecost. They were surprised. How can these Galileans speak uh, Arabic, Greek, or the language of the world? So this is the kind of new tongues the Bible is talking about. When you speak new tongues, you can speak language that you never learned directly through your spirit by the utterance of the Holy Spirit. Now the question is, when you speak in tongues, you are under the power of the Holy Spirit. Your spirit will sense the holy presence of the Holy Spirit. There is a supernatural power and strength that will overshadow you. So when you speak it, change, something will happen. Heaven is open. Because you are not the one speaking, it's the Holy Ghost speaking through you. So speaking tongues under the power of the Holy Spirit always brings results. What is the result? edification, strength. When you speak it, you sense the power of it over you. You sense it. Your spirit senses. Your conscious senses. You become strengthened. That is why Paul said that he that prophesies is greater than he that speaks in tongues unless he who speaks in tongues interpret so others can be edified. Edification has to do with understanding. So speaking in tongues in the spirit and in truth, is not directed or prompted by man, but the people say, hey, let's pray in the spirit and we start talking. But no, it's the Holy Spirit, according to your will, like his will, give you utterances. He himself directs you, the utterances to speak. And when you speak, something happens. Edification, healing can take place. We have seen it in life of the prophet you mentioned. So when he's speaking tongues, the people get healed. And he has a gift that he understands the tongues and he wrote them. I was surprised when I saw him writing it. And I said to myself, how is it possible to have angelic tongues and to write it? So I went to the Bible to pray. And God led me to the, the Holy Ghost prompted my spirit what happened to, 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 to the book of Daniel in Belshazzar. The Bible says the, the king used the instrument of the temple that he carried to Babylon and he used it to drink wine. And uh, he saw a hand on the wall writing scriptures. Uh, what he was writing, the king called all the people that master all the language of the kingdom, but none of them was able to read it. None of them. And they said there's a man called Daniel. They called Daniel. When Daniel came, he has a gift of the word of knowledge and wisdom. We all know. Daniel was able to read it and give the interpretation of the tongue and give and translate to them in the language they know. Many, many take up of us. You have, you have been weighed, weighed, and your kingdom has been divided. So there is no language that does not have meaning. So Paul say he who speaks in tongue should pray that he can be able to interpret to others. If not, if there is no interpret, Paul say pray to yourself and to God. That means engage your heart, your spirit, 
In private, he speaks in tongues. When he meets the people, he speaks in the spirit. So when you pray in the spirit, you don't even need to make any affirmations. You can pray in any language in your heart by speaking to God directly here under the power of the Holy Spirit. So what makes the tongues new is not because you speak angelic words. You can speak your, your native language, but when it's affected by the Holy Ghost, it becomes new tongues. A tongues with life. When you speak it, people get healed. When you speak it, just like prophecy. Because prophecy goes through your human understanding, you are speaking to human beings, but affected by the Holy Ghost, the heart will ring. The secret of heart will reveal that you are not only speaking, Holy Spirit is the one speaking through you. So, therefore, let him that speak in an unknown tongue pray that he may have the interpretation of the tongue. Now listen to Paul's own experience. We take it as guidelines. He applied it to himself because we have applied the word in our daily living. He said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 14, If I pray in an unknown tongue, so my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. In verse 15, he said, What is it then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. He said it. I will pray in both, as if he has a choice. So what I want you to understand is that the Holy Spirit works in cooperation with us. That's why the Bible says the, the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. If you are a spiritual man, God gives you understanding. So you, your, your spirit is cooperating with the Holy Spirit. So he speaks in a tongues when he's in the secret place. When he's in the midst of people, he speaks with understanding because his purpose for the gift is to edify the church. That's why when you look at the gift of the Holy Ghost, you will see the gift, the only one gift, diversity of tongues with tongues of men, and you see interpretation of tongues. Why the gift of interpretation is there? To edify the people. So all those gifts is meant to edify people. Word of wisdom, edify. Word of knowledge, edify. Prophecy, edify. And interpretation of tongues. But tongues of angels is not part of the gift because it's for God. But interpretation is there to edify the church. You're able to speak. So if you speak in tongues, angelic tongue, and you have the interpretation, it is like prophecy. People know what you're saying, your message, and say amen to your message. So, without making any judgment on anyone, is a thing of the Spirit. So, if God gives you the gift of speaking tongues, and you enter into the secret place by meditation, utterances can come by God in your spirit. You don't need to say a word. And that's what, that, that's what it is. It's not just uttering words. It's not saying words, but praying the prayer. Speaking tongues is what they call praying the prayer. It's the Spirit of God to give you utterances, and you are talking to God. He's the interpreter of the tongue. It's the language of heaven. So Holy Ghost, now we're standing between you and God to give you the meaning of the language to interpret it for you to understand it. And that's why I said, we should learn to engage our heart to meditate with God in our heart. And that's the way you can engage your spirit with God and you can receive the same revelation. It can be with a prophecy. It can be with a prayer. So, actual is not given by the Holy Ghost. He gave us inspiration and expression in prayer. So it is a gift that is very rare, very powerful, because a man of the Spirit prays to God straight because he has a relationship. So those, I believe those gifts are still there, but it's not prompted by man. It's prompted by the Holy Spirit. Speaking tongues is not saying words. It's praying the prayer under the guidance and power of the Holy Ghost. And when you speak it, you will sense the presence of God. Deep inside you, you will know God is with you. It's a personal experience. Wow. Thank you so much. That what, what, a, what a breadth of uh, an answer there. I'm sure you have to go back and go over those notes. But as Rasim was talking, I was just reminded, you know, he mentioned that um, the Holy Spirit will affect those words and there'll be a result. And I was just reminded of, you know, those, those services in the, uh, you know, the Synagogue Church for Nations where Prophet T.B. Joshua, sometimes he was led to pray in tongues in the service. And the results were palpable. I mean, you saw people delivered, healed. The tangible presence of God was felt through that, um, you know, that heavenly language. And it's just such a reminder that, you know, we don't do things by human imitation or led by men, but as Racine said, guided by the Spirit of God. And, you know, our words, you know, when they're in line with God's words and under the influence of the Holy Spirit, they do work wonders. So it all goes back to just putting our heart and mind and spirit under the control and guidance of the Holy Spirit. 
And uh, thank you so much for that really rich response. Uh, wow, a lot of uh, I just want to, food for I want thought. To leave her, I want to leave her with this verse of Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13. It says, things of heaven, things of the spirit, we speak not with words of human wisdom, teaches but words with the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things to spiritual, spiritual language. So please go closer to the spiritual father and don't stifle yourself. Holy Ghost can stir up the gift. If you have the gift from him, you can stir it up in your prayer with the Holy Spirit. This wisdom. Thank you. Yes, it's continually asking God for those, those spiritual gifts as a way of, you know, your relationship with him. You're calling with him. You're walking with him. He gives us those spiritual gifts in line with his, 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 his calling for our lives. So thank you so much, uh, Viloué. I know that that question has really um, been on the mind of so many. And I believe that it's, it's a great encouragement for all of us to dig deeper and, and be sensitive to the spirit of God. So right now we're joining Mr. Um, Tabo again from South Africa, who has um, a question for us. So what's your question? Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. <laughs> You're welcome. Yes, thank you. Yes, I just want to ask this question. Actually, it has been a burden in my heart for quite some time. Um, how can someone see clearly in the spirit? How can someone see clearly in the spirit? Knowing the mind of God or the opinion of God concerning yourself and others. Because I've been having this journey um, watching how actually the ministration was going at Skowen with uh, the disciples and the men of God, Prophet Joshua, whereby he can, you know, go maybe the whole day or half of the day prophesying to people. And I could understand how could he see so clearly, like in the spirit. And the moment I read through the scripture from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, from uh, verse 9, when it says that for we know in part and we prophesy in part, then I just became so lost. So I just said, no, let me just ask this question because I want to know how a person can, actually sees clearly in the spirit okay okay it has to do with one gift called discerning discernment this and uh, discernment you know spiritual things cannot be intellectually perceived and uh, you can't reason somebody into spiritual things they need to be discerned spiritually as the bible says in first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 that the natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit could have spiritually discerned. But with the mind of Christ, you can see them, you can hear them. And those that are hidden, he said, what man knows the things of man, talking about prophecy, what man knows the things of man, 1 Corinthians 2, 9, 11. The spirit of man is a lamp of the Lord, but the Holy Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of our heart. He knows what is in your heart. He knows your mind, he knows. And he's the spirit of revelation. He's the one that revealed those things. So, by sense knowledge, we cannot accommodate or understand the things of the spirit that are spiritually discerned. So, it's not the eyes of our body, but the eyes of our faith through our conscience, right? I have natural eyes. You can see me. I'm seeing on the screen. But only God sees your heart. And God sees my heart. And that's where the truth is. The heart of the matter is what is in your heart. To know man is to know his heart. And only God knows the heart and the intention of a man. If somebody comes and say, oh, my brother, I love you, I give you this. Okay, you, you see it at face value. You say, hey, he loves me. But do you know the motivation behind it? And Jesus does not judge what people say or do in his presence, but the motivation behind the actions, right? You see, many Pharisees came to him and began to ask him questions. They seemed as if they were interested to know the truth, but in fact, they wanted to trap Jesus. And in that matter, Jesus, seeing beyond their thoughts of their mind, knew the intention of their heart and responded by word of wisdom. So to see clearly, the scripture says, we walk by faith, not by sight. And 2 Corinthians chapter 4, from verse 16 to 18 says, we look not at the things that are seen, but those that are unseen. But what is seen is temporary. What is unseen is eternal. So now, if you were to see God's opinion or beyond the facts appearance, you need the Holy Spirit through your conscience. Remember, when Saul came in the presence of someone, 
Samuel looked at him immediately. God speaks to her that this is the man I want you to appoint as king. He knew God's opinion through the revelation of the Holy Spirit. We call it the inwardly received truth. When the Holy Spirit abides in you, he will lead you through revelation. What is revelation? The realization of something you never knew before. It's through the word. You can receive a word that will tell you God's opinion about yourself and others. And that's the sense of righteousness. That sense of righteousness, when the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit will produce the sense of righteousness, awaken your spirit to perceive the things of the spirit. You can have dream, vision, or you meet somebody, your heart will tell you, hey, this person is this, this person is that. But how prophecy came? A genuine prophet speaks the secrets of hearts. He will look at you and tell you the secrets of your heart. And that's exactly what someone said to Saul. He said, tomorrow, I will tell you what is in your heart. So that's it. So revelation is by the spirit of revelation, and that's in your spirit. When the Holy Ghost gives you revelation in your heart, he will reveal to you God's opinion that only you know. And if you act on it, you will see the result. So the only way to see life clearly is to have the eyes of your heart with your understanding to be opened. So in 1 King chapter 3, when Solomon was newly appointed as king, verse 9, he said to God, he said, Lord, I'm a young boy. My father David is a general. How can I lead these people, these big people, this big kingdom? I'm a child. I don't have no wisdom. Help me to judge rightfully. And God was pleased. God said, since you never ask me the life of your enemy or money, I will give you what you don't ask. I will give you wisdom that everybody has ever had. And from there, the Holy Ghost came in down with the gift of wisdom. That I give to the Holy Ghost in, in 1 Corinthians chapters, chapter 12, from verse 7. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom. What is wisdom? Sense of judgment. That sense of judgment is from your spirit. If you look at a person, you never judge anybody by experience, by outward, outward, outward appearance. But the Holy Ghost will tell you who is the person in front of you. That's why many times you met the prophet when he was here, he will tell you things that only you know. You don't need to tell him, I'm this. He knows. God will tell him the secrets of your heart. He will reveal the purpose of that prophecy is for salvation. Because God will reveal the hindrance in your life. That's what he said. Holy Ghost will convict you of sin, conviction of the heart. If somebody comes to the church and he's living a life that's not correct for salvation's sake, God may allow the word of revelation to come to tell the person what is hiding, what is in his heart, so they can come out and confess it and receive salvation. So the only way to see clearly the things of the Spirit is through the gift of discerning, discerning of the truth, discerning of spirit. So if somebody speaks, you know who is talking. So I used to say that Christianity is not mysticism. Christianity is spiritual. When you say any experience people can do that's not grounded on the word is just pure mysticism. But Christianity is spiritual. The word of God is spiritual by the Holy Spirit. God will tell you your opinion clearly. You see in the Bible, we you know the case of Balaam in the book of Numbers. The Bible says he was using uh, sacrifices and, and fortune teller spirit. He was able to see things in the spirit. They can see, but they cannot change your life. They cannot change your life. But the prophet, when he speaks to you, it comes with solution, life. So Christianity is spiritual. The only way to understand spiritual discernment, the instrument God gives us is our own conscience, God's instrument for discerning, discerning the truth, the thing of the spirit. So my brother, what you need? Engage your heart with God. God's word refreshes your mind. The word of revelation comes, refreshes your mind and conviction of heart will come when your heart rings. Yes, this is the truth. Your spirit will agree, right, that this is God and you act on it. Okay, you, are, you want to go to travel somewhere and God sees the danger coming. If your mind is reset, God will speak to you. Don't go. Before we come, hmm, he says it's God. I will not go. Let you discover, hey, there's an accident. We need to discipline our conscience to be educated by the words of the Holy Ghost, the word of God. There is a mighty importance of reading this Bible and meditating. There's a seed of life inside it. That life is what gives life to your conscience to awaken so you can be alert. A sense of righteousness produces a sense of seeing the other world at the side, the things of the spirit, and knowing God's opinion about others. Thank you. 
Wow. Thank you so much. I know that uh, the answer has blessed you all about the spirit of discernment. And uh, it's very true, you know, it's not mysticism, spiritual. And if spiritual, if it's based in the word of God, because every word of God is spirit and life. And uh, I really liked what Racine said, where fortune tellers, uh, seers, all those people, they can see, they can see, but they can't change your life. Um, they, it's only uh, the word of God in your heart, which has that transforming power, that ability to change your life and, uh, you know, come into the destiny that God has for you. So th this, and, th and this is the good news of the Bible. That's why today is the day of salvation. It's never too late. You can make that decision which changes your life. And uh, what a wonderful opportunity we have today to dig deeper into the scriptures because all this is life changing. That's why we're here. And that's the vision and mission of the University of God to help get the word into people's hearts because it's there that it becomes effective. Oh, Dr. Bashiru is here. Great. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Oh, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Happy new beginning. Thank you. Amen. Happy new beginning. Um, so we'd love to hear your question. Um, what, what question do you have for us, sir? Yes, uh, there's a phrase I've been hearing repeatedly, and I just wanted to know more about it. You notice the prophet used the phrase when he was trying to answer your question. Uh, I think the second but last um, person who asked a question. Um, and also, Prophet T.B. also used that uh, term uh, again and again. He says, um, prayer is not saying words, but praying prayer. And they always end the, that, the, that phrase by saying that when you say words, you hear yourself, people around you hear you, but God doesn't hear you. So that I just wanted to um, understand more about, about that term, that phrase. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, um, when the prophet said that prayer is not saying words, but the, the sentence fully said, prayer is not saying words, but praying the prayer. It simply means that God does not need our words to move him into action. God has his own way of implementing his will in our life and the circumstances of our lives, right? Very often we pray because of circumstances around us. Somebody is sick, so naturally he asks God for healing. Or somebody having financial challenges, he asks God for blessings. And we realize that many of the time, our natural circumstances dictate the direction of our prayers. So now the question is, if a situation happens to your life, before I tell God the solution what to do, because I'm pulling God to my mind, I'm telling God what I want him to do for me. And he first understand what is God's opinion in the matter. I mean, I submit myself to the will of God. First, if you pray, God, what is this? What is your opinion about it? You all know in the book of John chapter 11, uh, they send quickly a delegation to Jesus, say, ah, Jesus, the man whom you love, Lazarus, is sick at the point of death. Please come and come and rescue him, come and save him. But what happened? Jesus did not rush to go immediately there, never. Jesus stood two days to make sure Lazarus died. That seems strange. <laughs> and uh, he said to the disciples, oh, our friend Lazarus is sleeping. He said, oh, Lord, if Lazarus is sleeping, he will wake up naturally. Don't go there. You are threatened that we are arrested. Jesus said, okay, Lazarus is dead. I'm happy that I was not there. Why did Jesus say that? With the compassion the Lord has, if Jesus was there and seeing Lazarus in such a desperate situation, definitely the Lord may heal him. Right? He never rejected anybody who comes to him for healing. Never. But Jesus came there because God wanted. To, God has in every situation of life, God has something to say, and that's the key of His will. So, Jesus wanted to. God allowed that situation to happen to reveal His glory in the matter. The glory was to reveal Jesus. Through a new name, the resurrection and the life. That's what he said. I am the resurrection and the life. The will of God in the matter was not to heal Lazarus. The will of God was to raise Lazarus from the dead. For this, Lazarus has to die for resurrection to come. So Jesus waited till Lazarus died. And when he came, they said, ah, Lord, as if it was too late. If you had been here, Lazarus would have died. Jesus said to her, 
if you believe, you will see the glory of God. And listen, that's what we all do. We say, Lord, I know you are the Son of God. And I know my brother will rise from the last day. Can't you imagine? <laughs> she was talking about the last day. But Jesus was saying, now. Means her belief was not correct. Jesus' will was to raise Lazarus from the dead. Now, not to wait for the resurrection of the dead. So that showed that she didn't never believe she had a sense of knowledge. She was just talking. So at the moment Jesus came to say, remove the stone. The person that seemed to have faith said, Lord, what are you doing? There's a stench. This is four days he died. I mean, it's impossible, right? But Jesus knew that, <laughs> my God, Jesus said to the Father, I thank you for you always listen to me. Jesus saw the resurrection before because Jesus is Lord. He doesn't, Jesus is never rushed by the emergencies of others. But the will of the Father. So if you allow your natural circumstances to guide you, you can come to give utterances against the will of God and there will be no answer. But you must first know what does God want in this matter. Then Jesus spoke the word of faith. Let us came back to life to reveal the glory of God. When Paul was sick with a thorn in his flesh in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 to 10, Paul came to pray, God, remove this thing, remove this thing, remove this thorn. It was painful. And he knew that it was from Satan. So when he prayed, never received an answer. He prayed again, no answer. On the third time, God says, my grace is sufficient for you. God may allow natural circumstances to test our faith. How do you know you believe God? It's easy to say, I believe Jesus and everything is fine. But don't forget what Satan said to Job. Hey, these people, these Christians, these people, they love you only, they believe in you only for selfish reason. Because you bless them. They believe in you is based on blessing, not on you. Remove the blessing and you will see the abound on you. That's what he said. But before you open utterances, it's important to come before God and ask for his will. That's why Prayer is not saying words, but praying the prayer. You need the Holy Spirit to come and tell you what is God's opinion in the matter. And then he will give you the right utterances of prayer before God. But if you're led by the second you're going to ask God, give me this, give me this, give me this, give me this. First, that's what the prophet said. Prayer changes us and faith causes things to happen. You remember what Tim Joshua said? Prayer changes me, faith causes things to happen. What does this mean? This mean, before you enter the presence of God for prayer, you must enter the realm of prayer. You must first begin to meditate. What is God's opinion? When you meditate on the situation, revelation will come to tell you that God may allow this for a purpose. Once the inner conviction comes to your heart, you will not be going to ask God to heal me. You begin to praise him, asking for different things. Amen. Amen. When you know God's opinion, then you can pray according to his will and that result will come. So your focus is important before you come to God because you don't pull God to your mind. You submit to his will. God's power cannot work unless our will is submit to the will of God. So praying the prayer means in Romans chapter 8, verse 26, 27, we don't know how to pray. We don't know what to say. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us with groans, his words, a human cannot uttered that spirit prayer. He will determine what to pray and what to pray for. He will tell you the reason why you should pray. Okay, but Jesus, when he gets the money, Jesus knew he has to go through the cross. And he prayed to the Father, Father, is this possible? Let this can pass by. But nevertheless, not my will, let your will be done. God is only moved by his will. So, the seed in your heart, the word of revelation, should move your faith to ask according to his will. And when you do that, God will come to the scene. That's what we say. Meditation brings revelation. Revelation brings conviction of knowing the will of God. That's the root of belief. So when you act on it, God will meet you at the point of movement and the spirit of God will come and result will come. So in every circumstance of life, before we pray in the things of the Spirit, you must engage your heart, discipline your mind, and seek learning to hear what God says is far more important than actually says. Because even when you pray, sit back in silence and listen to what God has to say. That's why we say prayer is not saying word, but praying the prayer. 
pray in the prayer meeting, Holy Spirit will give you the revelation what to pray for. As you are sitting down, you have your loved one somewhere in a foreign country, they'll have an issue. Something will tell you, pray for this person. If you are sensitive, you start praying. And just go, ah, that person was in trouble. So praying the prayer or dream dreams, that revelation from the Spirit of Father. Inspiration and expression power of the Holy Spirit. That is the meaning of it. So prayer, in summary, is the same words, but praying the prayer, it is a reality. It is not talking to the air. Matthew 15, verse 8, we're talking to the air. This will come to me, but the heart is far from me. So we need to engage our heart. What is the purpose of our heart? All prayers must be prayer of faith. And faith is of man's heart, man's spirit. Our heart is the landing point, contact point for the Holy Spirit, the comforter. In John chapter 4, verse 24, we are praying to God and God is spirit. So in the book of John, he said, those who worship God, those who pray, must do so in spirit and in truth. I mean, first, you must enter the realm of prayer in the spirit. If you discern the voice of God, then you can pray in truth. So if you do not pray to God, who is spirit, in the spirit, you will be led by your emotions or intellect. And uh, when what you read, what you see, will affect your prayer. And you begin to utter something different from the will of God. And an answer prayer will stand. Does God only fulfill his will? He does not answer our prayers to the letter, but according to his will. Thank you. I hope I've answered your question. It's true, you know, our words can entertain men, but they may not reach God. It's not about uh, those saying type of word or type of word. It's about the motivation of our heart. Because uh, thoughts and words to Jesus, that's true prayer. It's our heart, which is the shortest route between us and God. That's the way we connect to God, is our heart motivation. That's why we keep talking about heart, heart, heart. Newton, is Newton available from Australia? I know it must be very late in Australia now. Wow, <laughs> if you're still here, we salute you. We salute your faith. Yeah, Newton, are you there? Great, wow. You you're doing video with us. <laughs> Good morning, thank you for your patience. <laughs> so um, we, we'd love to hear your question. Morning. Good morning. Yes, uh, my question is, you know, this other day we're studying the book of John and uh, verse one says uh, uh, the word was with God and uh, the word of God is called. Why is the word of God uh, called God? That is my question. What is the word of God? God. Okay. Right. And God, yes. And John said in first John chapter one, verse one, he said, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word is God. Right, right in the beginning in Genesis chapter one, the scripture says, God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was informed and void and there was darkness. And the Bible says the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters and that step Emptiness was everywhere. Darkness was everywhere. But Holy Spirit were there. Right? And God said, let there be light. And light came. That's why Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 to 2 says, we know that God Almighty created the heavens and the earth through the word of God. The word came into existence by the word. And that's an important thing. The word of God is a spirit. It creates material things. God calls the things that are not as if it were, they come to be, Romans 1 14. So the essence, the creative essence that make God whom he is, is his word. That's why he said in the Ten Commandments, that yeah, that shall sort of worship any image, not a representation of things in heaven and earth under the earth. That's idolatry. The only thing God recommends is his word, and that's faith. The only way to know God is by faith. And faith comes from the living word of God, and faith makes us one with God. It requires hearing the word and obeying the word. That's how we walk in righteousness all over the world. Right from the beginning, God gave instruction to the man he created. He said to him, go to the garden, there are many trees, but this one, knowledge of evil, don't touch it. God is so much love to us. 
that instruction is love. God never said to man, don't eat the fruit of eternal life. There's one tree. If Adam has ate it, eternal life will be there forever. But he never touched that one. He went and touched the wrong tree. Because of what? Temptation. The snake. We are living in the world dominated by the devil. And he wants you to do what is opposite to the will of God. That is his suggestion. Right? So the only way to honor God is through his word by spirit. The only way to know God is through his word by his spirit. God does nothing, absolutely nothing without his word. The Holy Spirit does nothing without the word of God. So in the book of 1 John chapter 5, verse 6, concerning Jesus, John said, there are three that testifies in heaven. So not every Bible has that verse in NIV, but you can have it in New Kings or Extended NIV. It says, there are three that testify in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. And the three are one. John, chapter 5, verse 7, 6, 7. There are three that testify in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. And the three are one. Mean that word is Jesus. That's the word that became flesh and entered the world. That's the word of life. It's Christ. So when we listen very carefully, Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 to 2 says, God in the older times spoke to us through the prophets. But in this time, God speaks to us through the Son. And the Father has given authority to all men through his Son, John chapter 17. So Jesus came with the word to, to reveal the plan of God, the new gospel, the good news, to declare living words that can save you. And Jesus came, it was a word that became flesh. What makes God his essence? Not you're going to see him, but you can hear his word. His holy words makes God. That's why Christ and the word are one. The word is the living presence of his power. God's word reflects his character. God's word reflects his holiness, his righteousness. The word of righteousness gives life. So the only way to say you are a Christian, we are not Christian by experience. We are Christian by the word of God, as Peter said. First Peter chapter 123, we are born again. Not of a corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed through the word of God that's living forever. Right? So John, John chapter 1 says, That which was from the beginning, that which you have heard, seen, and touched, that's the word of life. That is Jesus. That's God. When God descended on Deuteronomy chapter 4, from verse 12, God descended on the mountain to speak to the people of Israel, to give the Ten Commandments. The Bible says, when God descended, there was a smoke and a trumpet blast, and there was a fray. There was fire everywhere, but they never saw any face. But they heard the voice of God. The only way to know God today is through his word, by his spirit. That's why we have to be very, very careful on any spiritual experience that's not based on the word of God can lead you to error. That's why the Bible says, test the spirit to know that they are from God or not. First John chapter 4. For not any person that's speaking the spirit is from God. Any spirit that says that Jesus came in flesh is of God. If not, then to Christ. So, what makes you born again today is the word of God. What makes you to know God is the word of God. God blesses you through his word by his spirit. Heals you through his word by his spirit. Guide you through his word by his spirit. What makes you one with God is faith. How does faith come? By hearing the word of life, the word of God. So when you say God or Jesus today, it is the word. That's why I want to congratulate all of you. I want you to understand the importance of the journey you have read through this Bible I'm showing you. This is God is in the word. God is inside of this. This word came from God, inspired by the Holy Spirit. God is in it, and you are yourself, you are in it. And there's a mystery. This word is a seed. So when you read this word as a seed and you meditate in your heart, what happens? As you plant a seed, that's why Jesus used the parable of the sower, which is the number one of all the parables. He said, the kingdom of God is like planting a seed. But the ground on which the seed is planted 
is not your intellect. It's not your mind that is unfruitful. But the ground is your heart. Matthew chapter 13, verse 19. So when Jesus is speaking to you, he's planting the seed of the word in your heart. And that's the word of life. The question is, when a man is talking, how do we know the person that has words of life or ordinary words? Ordinary words cannot change your life. Ordinary words cannot make you born again. But when the Holy Ghost speaks, changes are beginning. That's the word that gives you faith. We call it divine faith. Because why divine faith? When the word is planted in your heart, in your spirit, like a seed, it will begin to germinate in your heart. It will begin to germinate when you believe for salvation and you begin to have roots like a tree. When the tree starts growing, nobody can see it. But down the ground, you can see some roots growing. And that root is what we call belief in your heart. The word does it. Only the word of faith. So when you understand the word, it enters your heart. It will bring conviction. Yes, this is true. Your conscience will bear witness. And you believe it and belief starts inside your heart. And that belief, that conviction of heart, that yes, Jesus is Lord. Yes, he is resurrected. Yes, I believe. You confess it and you release faith on the outside and salvation comes. So now you can see, that's what the Bible says, God's word reflects his character. What is the character? The fruit of the spirit. Goodness, gentleness, that is, that's a tree of righteousness. Faith like the tree of righteousness. So when you plant the word, it will grow the nature of Christ in you within the word. So when you accept Jesus, you are accepting the nature of God himself. But Jesus is Lord. What is his nature? The fruit of the spirit. Kindness, gentleness, joy in the spirit. So the only way to know God today is through his word by his spirit. That's why he warned everybody about idolatry about mysticism, about any spiritual experiences not in line with the word of God, please be careful. Test the spirit. Test the prophecy to know what is in line with the word of God. That's why we said we walk in the spirit when we walk in line with the word of the Holy Spirit. The instruction of such walk in the spirit is guided by the Holy Spirit. Meaning, at each step, intimation come, direction come. Don't do this. Don't do that. Your conscience will guide you. And that's how you can walk in the spirit in harmony with the will of God. So you can see the Bible never shows you any image, only his word. Word, word, word. Gave instruction to Moses, gave instruction to Abraham, gave instruction to Isaac and Jacob. Even the law of Moses is the obedience to God's word. But Jesus has come to bring a new message through the word of the gospel of Christ. That's the gospel of salvation. There's a promise inside of it. If you believe what the gospel says, that Jesus is the Son of God, that he's the Lord, you believe his death and his resurrection, and you confess it, salvation comes, righteousness comes. The only way to channel your spiritual life is the word of God. That's how we need to go get the word into our heart. Get your word into your heart. That's your duty. In this year, 2023, the only way to secure this way is the word of God. So you have read through the Bible. Now you have seen a lot of story. You have seen what happened to many nations in the time of judges. Anytime they err away from the word of God, they have trouble. But God's will is not to see people to die. God wants people to come back to him and receive life. That's why the prophet was speaking to people to bring their heart back to God. They tell him, repent, the kingdom of is at hand. To show them the right way. He's the merciful God. So this Bible is a mystery. So don't open it and read by yourself. Ask the Holy Spirit. Because the word and the spirit must go together. That's what Jesus meant. Unless you are born of water and the spirit, you're going to enter the kingdom of God. It's a symbolic way. I said you need the word and the life, the word and the spirit. Believing it, salvation comes. Christ believed, salvation comes. We are made in our heart to be like Jesus. The only way to be like Jesus is through the word, by his spirit. That's the word is God. That's the revelation of God. That's the word. I hope I answered your question. 
I think uh, Mr. Newton's busy writing that. Yeah, we have a nod. I think that question has been answered. Um, food for thought, yes. And the, the food is the word of God. Remember, it's not just uh, to eat that food. You have to chew it. Remember, we talked about that in that session, feeding on the word. You chew the word of God, meditate on it over and over again. And uh, yep, that is what it's all about. Digging deeper into the word of God. Hola, Maria. Hola. <laughs> Vale, mi pregunta, ¿quién es, ¿quiénes son los hijos de la promesa y de qué nos libera esa promesa? Gracias. So, uh, Maria's question is about, in the Bible, when it refers to who are the children of promise and what does that promise refer to? What, what does that promise free us from? What, what is the promise and who are the children of promise in the Bible? Okay. I said, your question is the heart of the matter. The question of the Bible, what is the Bible all about? The Bible is all about one promise, righteousness. When God created the heavens and the earth, he created man. And God said, it's not good for man to be alone. And he created, he brought Eve to him. That's the, God laid down the foundation of human society by the institution of that marriage. And God bless her, multiply. The will of God, the mind of God, the purpose of God is not to populate the world, but to fill the world with godly people, godly Christian homes, righteous people, people that will walk in this earth in obedience to God, in communication with God, in relationship with God. That's righteousness. That's what the will of God, the mind of God when he created Adam. We can see right from the beginning, God was the one coming to visit Adam every day in the garden. And the Bible says, at the end of the day, God will come and see his friend to talk to him. It is God that is looking at you. It is God that wants to relate with you. It is Jesus came to seek and save the lost. We are not the one that love God first. No, God loves us first. <laughs> we are not the one that, that seek him. He's the one that seeks you. So now God made a promise. When man fell, Unfortunately, the relationship was broken because of sin. Man lost the presence of God. There was no relationship, no communication. Immediately, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, God says to the snake that I will make enmity between you and the woman. Her seed and your seed. The seed will crush your head. That's the first promise God said in the Bible. When Adam sinned. Why God say that? What is a seed? Who is that seed? Prophetically, the seed was referring one day, a man born of a woman would come and deliver us from the power of sin and the snake. That's what God said. But who is that seed that come and deliver us? So when you see the promise of God, when God, the whole world was full of violence in the book of Genesis chapter 6, and God God, God regretted for creating human life. And the Bible says the flood came and that old world, that old generation was wiped away by the waters in the time of Noah. But when God looked, he saw one man called Noah and he was righteous in the sight of God. And that's exactly what God wants. People like Noah, like Abraham, that walked in the fear of the Lord and this earth in faith. And God saved him with his children and his family. Eight people only survived that whole generation. Now, what happened? When you trace the Bible to, from Noah to Seth, you go to Abraham. That's where the promise really started. When the time came for God to fulfill his promise, he visited Abraham in the book of Genesis and said to you, Abraham, all the nations of the world shall be blessed in your name and seed. That's the promise. And when God made the promise, Abraham said, ah, Lord, I'm an old man. I'm really 100 years old. My wife is as old as me. How can she be a child? And you say, you will, I will have generation every." And God changed his name even for that. God bring him out and say, look at the stars. If you can count them, such will be your descendants. That's what God said. But who are the descendants you're talking about? 
who are the promised the seed. That's what Paul explained in the book of Romans chapter 9. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. The seed God is talking about is the seed of righteousness. He made Abraham a covenant of righteousness. When Abraham believed, the Bible say it was credited, credited to him as righteousness. Genesis 15 verse 6. And God said to him, Abraham, you will have a son from your own body. And when Sarah heard, she doubted. But God made a miracle. What happened? You can see that Sarah was barren, but God intervened and she gave birth to Isaac. Isaac had Rebecca. God intervened, he gave birth to Jacob and Esau. Rachel was barren, he gave birth to Joseph and Benjamin. So we are tracing that seed God promises that will come one day to bring the blessing of Abraham to the whole world. What is that seed? I'm going to summarize because it's too long to explain. God said to Abraham in Genesis chapter 22, take your son, your only son whom you love, and give it to me as sacrifice in one of the mountains I'm going to show you. Can't you imagine? The God that promised him that his seed will be a blessing. And God said, that seed, ever come and give it to me sacrifice. Abraham never doubted God. One second. He never told Sarah. He woke up. He took Isaac, called his servant, put the wood on the donkey, and walked towards the land of Moriah. And the scripture says, when he was three days of reaching the place, he saw the mountain. And he said to his servant, stay here. Let me go with the child. He was ready in his heart. He has obeyed God already. He never complained. And Isaac said, Lord, Father, where is the lamb for the sacrifice? Oh, God will provide. Jehovah Yire, God will provide, said Abraham. And when he took him to the mountain, Abraham bound his, his son and put it on the wood. He stretched his hand. This means the angel stopped him. If God did not stop him, he would sacrifice his son. For God, the heart of Abraham has sacrificed Isaac already. God stopped him and gave a ram. So by this, God is saying to Abraham what himself is going to do through the seed, which is Jesus. That God will send his son Jesus on the cross to be sacrificed for all of us. And he who believes in it will receive the promise of Abraham. The promise of Abraham is the promise of righteousness, Holy Spirit. That's what Paul pleads in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14, that Christ became a curse for us so that we may receive the blessing of Abraham, the promise of the Holy Spirit. That is the promise of the Bible. Holy schools, Holy Spirit. That's the only promise of eternal life. That's why Jesus said, you need to be born again. And that's the heart of the matter of the Bible. To be born again, to be regenerated, is to be restored to the image and likeness of Christ. And when you have the Holy Spirit, you will live right. You become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. When you believe what the Bible says in Romans 10, 10, believing with the heart, you come into righteousness. So the promise of heaven, you are a child of promise. You and I, we are a child of promise because God made a promise to the nations. The nations who believe in Christ Jesus, you believe in him, he's the son of God. You believe his sacrificial death for you by the cleansing power of the faith in his blood. And you believe Jesus has been raised from the dead and you believe it with all your heart, the Bible says you receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. When you receive it, you become a child of God. You can call God Father. That's the heart of God. The whole Bible from beginning to end can be summarized by this promise, righteousness, born again. That's what Jesus said. Jesus never gave any other promise. The only promise he gave, Holy Spirit. In John 14, 15, when I go to the Father, I will pray and I will send you the Comforter, the Holy Ghost, the promise of the Father. When he comes, you will know I am in the Father you are with me. That's what the Bible is all about. That's what the gospel is all about. That's what the universe is all about. Salvation, eternal life, have the gift of the Holy Ghost and walk in your life led by God every day. When you have the Holy Spirit, you will fear nothing. You are saved already. You are in heaven. God will take care of you, linked up with God. So when people are afraid, you pray and God will answer the Holy Ghost is there praying with you every day, guiding you every day in your life. And that's eternal life. We don't believe Jesus for material things. 
We don't believe Jesus for silver and gold. We believe Jesus for eternal life, everlasting life is the kingdom of heaven. That's the message of Jesus. When Nicodemus came to him, ah, Lord, you see the power. No one can do these wonders unless God is with him. And Jesus said to him, in truth, I'm telling you, you need to be born again. You need to be what? Born again. And say, how can this be? Jesus said, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. Take note. Jesus said, see the kingdom of God. He must be born again through the eyes of righteousness and faith. But nobody can enter unless you are born of water and the spirit. What does it mean? Born of the word and the spirit. We are born again not by emotional sensation. We have the Holy Ghost. We have it because we believe the word of life. And that's what brings the new birth. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. So the promise of the Bible is the call, is receiving salvation, everlasting life, and the promise of the Holy Spirit. That is just it. That's what being Christianity is all about, Holy Spirit. It stands on the elimination of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias, Maria. Your, your question has been a blessing for all of us. And uh, thank God that you were able to ask that question because now we know that the Bible, the whole Bible is summarized in the promise of the Holy Spirit for you. And that promise is for you as a child of God, each and every one of us. What a wonderful revelation from God. And I think we, we have time for just one more. Um, Antoinette, are you there from Belize? Yes, 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 yes. My, my name is Antoinette Palonio and I am from Belize, Central America. Mm -hmm. Welcome. What, what's your question that you have? Yes, my question is, um, how do I maintain this lifestyle? Is it, because, is it because I or we were under a prophetic instruction and the Holy Spirit was backing us up throughout this um, journey through the Bible that um, we were able to, to finish it successfully with so much revelation, you know? Yes. And so that is my question. Yes, <laughs> you have <laughs> you have discovered. I say you have discovered the secret. You have discovered the secret that the Bible says, if you turn to God once, God will turn to you a million times. If you open this Bible, you want to know God. It's the only way, the Holy Bible. When you open your Bible and read, for salvation's sake. Holy Spirit will come, give you the strength, the energy, and open the eyes of your understanding. This is how we walk with God through his word, by his spirit. And this journey is, is a lifetime journey. You have done the full from Genesis to Revelation. Now, when you approach the word again, we are going to talk about, you will see anytime you read, new revelation will come. That's how you develop your relationship with God with Jesus and the Holy Ghost by reading your Bible daily and much more important meditating on it because when the seed is planted in the beginning you need to water it it is God's word planted in your heart watered through meditation that brings about the result that's how you grow in the knowledge of God by the time you do it awareness of the things of the spirit will start Confidence we start. A new confidence come from heaven. A new boldness, a new joy come. That's how Holy Ghost will begin to affect you. This is the changes we are talking about. When you read it, you become spiritual. You become God-minded. You love the Bible and the word begins to produce its fruit in you. That's why Jesus said, when the word is planted in the right soil, meaning in the heart that believes for the salvation's sake, the word produces the fruit of righteousness. So anytime you hear and obey, something enters you that increases your confidence in God. And that's now you're getting closer to him. You are getting to know the spirit of God by hearing, obeying, meditating. And very soon your prayer will change. Because when you read the word and meditate in the word, inspiration will come. The word stored in your heart becomes the tool of the spirit. Once you meditate to understand, 
That's the word God will use in your prayer. When your heart is saturated with the word, understanding come. You know, we have knowledge and we have understanding. And if you look carefully, knowledge comes first, then understanding. The fact that you know a truth does not mean you fully understand it. Right? If they say you, somebody preached you, Jesus is Lord. Okay, you know the truth. Jesus is Lord. But do you understand what it means? That's when the Holy Spirit will come. Holy Spirit will take you deep to have a deeper understanding of the truth, spiritual understanding. What does it mean to know Jesus? Once you come to that knowledge and revelation in your heart, confidence will stand and conviction will stand. And what you understand, nobody can remove it. You remember, we all went to school. There are many things you learn in primary school you have forgotten. We don't remember anymore. If they give us the same test we did in primary school, we all fail. But what you understand stays with you forever. What you understand is part of you. So understanding is a key. When you read the Bible, that's why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 13, verse 19, when the word of the kingdom of God is sown into man's heart and he does not understand it, that's when the devil will snatch the word out. So understanding what you read is a key. So when you are reading, ask the Holy Ghost to give you the gift of understanding. In Job 32, verse 8, the Bible says, In you there is the Spirit, and the breath of the Almighty, the Holy Ghost, will give you spiritual understanding. When you read something, you know we're doing question and answers, but now in your daily walk, when you read something, before you ask another interactive, sit down at home to ask God, what's the meaning of this? Holy Spirit, why do you say this? What's the meaning of this? Meet it in your heart. And before you realize it, another scripture will just come. Tell you the meaning of it. The Bible explains itself by the Bible. Each verse is explained by the Bible. Everything you have remains in the context of the Bible by the Spirit of God. So please, it's vital, 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 vital that we maintain our spiritual life by abiding in the Word of God and the Word abides in you. Because our life depends on it. The word abides in you by meditation. When you meditate and understanding come, conviction come, and then you abide in the word. Because that conviction will settle the word in your heart forever. And then you begin to live by it. The word living in you, and you're living in the word. You read, you understand, and you apply the word rightfully in your journey. So you live in the word when you apply the word daily, in your prayer, in your life, and your life will never be the same. When I started reading the Bible in the beginning, I didn't understand anything. But one day I persevered. Remember, I gave you the example to read at home, the book of Acts chapter 8, from verse 20 to the end. The Bible says there was an Ethiopian eunuch who came to visit the temple of, of Solomon. And when what he saw really strikes him, struck his mind. So he was reading the book of Isaiah in his chariot, trying to understand. He was reading. He did not understand what he was reading, but he never gave up. He was reading through the chariot. So when you are reading, somebody is watching you. Who is that somebody? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit located the man in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah. The man did not understand. He just sent an angel. An angel came to Philip said, go to the way of Gaza. Go there. And Philip went there. And he told God, God said to him, go closer to this chariot. And when he came closer, he heard the man reading the book of Isaiah. And when he entered, when he came closer, he said to the man, do you understand what you are reading? The man said, how can I understand unless somebody explained to me? Then he invited Philip on board and Philip began to explain to him. The man said, who is the prophet talking about him? Is it himself or somebody else? And he began to tell him who Jesus was, what he did. When he explained to him the understanding, spiritual understanding, all countries. And the man understood the purpose of Christ's work, what he did for humankind. Understanding is key, is vital of faith. You can never believe what you do not understand. So when understanding came, the man said to him, stop. Please, there is water here. What, what can stop you from being baptized? Philip never asked. The man asked. Those conviction was there. He took him to the water and baptize him, and the man was saved by conviction of heart. That is it. So, the only way to develop our relationship with God is through his word, by his spirit. 
dedicate yourself and discipline your mind with the word of God daily. Treasures this word. Don't neglect the Bible. If you neglect the Bible, you neglect God. We don't, we don't live by experience. We live by the word. And that's very important to come to spiritual maturity. So the only way to challenge the way through 2023, continue, don't stop. Take your Bible. Read. We have another message for you, and you will say you at the end of this program, how to continue to develop, to grow in understanding in wisdom. Grow in understanding wisdom in the knowledge of God. Because you have to increase. Your spiritual life has to grow. And we grow in the stature of Christ. You know, conversion is once. But Christ-likeness is forever. We grow every day in knowledge. In the Anytime you read the Bible, new revelation comes. That's the way. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Wow, well, what a question. And I think even though there are so many more questions, I think we're going to end with that one because it really points us to the way forward. And the way forward is um, we're in a new year, 2023. We've all renewed our, our covenant with God, a covenant to, to keep in his word and to continue to seek his face through his word and by his spirit. So many people have said, how do I continue the journey through the Bible? I want to continue. I want to continue. And like Racine said, this is a lifestyle. This is a journey with God. So um, actually, the journey starts from tomorrow, the 3rd of January, till we reach the end of the year. And that reading plan, by the grace of God, you will see it um, after the program. It will be uploaded onto our official website, www.theuog.org. And we have a special um, gift for all of you who have um, finished the journey through the Bible with us and attended this meeting. I don't know if any of you remembered at the very beginning, we, um, when we announced this journey through the Bible, we said, oh, maybe we'll send you a bookmark or something at the beginning. Do you remember that? Do you remember anyone where I, I, I held up this bookmark? Do you remember? Well, we have something even better for you. We have something um, inspired by God. And you can see on the screen, this is an exclusive um, calendar with the plan of the new journey through the Bible. And it's going to be a PDF copy that will be sent to you to your email in the next few days. Those of you who have, who have uh, been privileged to attend this Zoom meeting, um, the Reflections on the Journey meeting, and who finished the journey through the Bible with us here at the University of God. So you can see on the screen, uh, this is just a, uh, an exclusive blessing for your life. Um, we really celebrate with you that you finish this journey through the Bible, and this is just the beginning. So I'm sure you're excited about that. Rasim, what do you want to say? Yes, I want to say that I congratulate all of you. You have opened the door, and now the journey continues to grow in maturity, to grow in faith, because we have a lot of responsibility. You have a family, you have a job, you have loved one, and God wants you to work victoriously. And the only way to do it is to be mature in the, in the word. And the question is not just to know the Bible, but the right application of the Bible in your life, in your prayer life. That's why we encourage you to go through this journey again, but you make it much easier. So we have time to explain. Anytime you read, we give you explanation of each, each step. If you read the first three chapters, we explain the basic lessons of those chapters. So you can grow through the year in the knowledge of the Bible, the divine meaning that will develop your faith, develop your relationship with God, and you know how to apply the word of God rightfully because we are concerned about your faith and your relationship between you and God straight. That's very important. There's no imitation in faith, no procreation. Faith must rise in each person's heart. It is time to be mature, to work with God, and to develop intimate relationship between you and the spirit of God. That's why we are here to help you get the word in your heart and to work maturely and apply the plan of success God gave to Joshua. Let this word not depart from your eyes. Meditate on it. So meditate on it. So that word not depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night and do what the word says. And that's the key to good life, to good success. Applying the word of God in your life daily. So we are here to accompany you for the journey again. We'll be with you. We'll have a more interactive session from this year. Definitely, it's not the last one. And you have more questions, we have more time to come and explain in life and talk to you and provide the answer as God gives us inspiration expressions. Amen. Thank so you. I know that's good news. And you can find your reading plan um, by the grace of God. It will be uploaded after this meeting on the uh, official UOG website, 
www.theuog.org. And whilst we're here, please be careful of fraudsters. Many people um, using fake uh, social media accounts, using Racine's name, using my name, using the name of the University of God. If it's not on, the, on our website, our official website, the social media links, please don't be defrauded um, by those using um, uh, the names of Racine or my name or the University of God. So please be beware of fraudsters. So uh, we actually want to go into that realm of prayer now to welcome the Holy Spirit into this wonderful um, journey, the journey that we've started together, 2023. What a way to start the new year. So God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All of you online and those who are watching all over the world, we pray. There's no way to know God other than his word and by his spirit. Father, we thank you for each and everyone here present. You know them by name. And distance is not a barrier for you, Lord. I pray for each and every one of the soul watching as they read through the journey of the Bible. Take them to the promises of God in their life. Make them cross in the name of Jesus into your promises. Father, visit them. Visit them. Touch their life, spirit, soul, and body. Touch their heart. Touch their soul. Touch their mind in the name of Jesus. Bless their soul, Lord. Open their heart to understanding of the Bible, to understanding of your way in the name of Jesus. Lord, commit yourself to their protection in this year, 2023. We commit each and every one under the shadow of the Holy Ghost, under the shadow of your presence. Bless them. Guide them. Put the mark of your favor upon each and every one in the name of Jesus. Put the mark of your favor upon them in the name of Jesus. Bless their lives. Bless their home. Bless their business. Bless their health in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, O Holy Spirit, think through us, think through them until your ideas become their ideas in the name of Jesus. Your thoughts become their thoughts in the name of Jesus. Think through them, Lord. Breathe themselves in their mind so their heart may be holy. Make them holy as you are holy. Act in them, Holy Ghost, by your divine power so their, their work may be holy. Sanctify them by the truth. For your word is truth. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Let them begin to hear your voice ringing in their heart. Take them to a place of revelation of the word. As they read the Bible, re open their mind to spiritual understanding. Open their heart to discern your voice. Father, as many have asked, no one can know Jesus except through you. And no one can abide the word rightfully except through you. You are the Alpha, you are the Omega, or Holy Spirit. Therefore, I commit everyone to your mercy. Locate them as you located the Ethiopian eunuch. Locate them in your mercy. Locate them in your grace. Locate them in your power. They are children of promise. These are the promised Lord. Visit them, Lord. Visit them, Lord. Visit their life. Visit them, Lord, with blessing. Visit them. Visit them with salvation. Visit them with eternal life. Visit them in the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let them, have, let them have spiritual discernment to say, yes, God has spoken to me. Father, turn their words, affect their life, turn their prayer life, teach them how to pray, how to walk with you in the name of Jesus and speak to their heart, speak to their mind. Give them the gift of eyes that can see and perceive the things of the spirit. Give them the gift of heart that can discern and understand your little voice in the name of Jesus. Make their conscience to ring and their life will never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, lead them through this year safely in the name of Jesus. Guide them through all the circumstances of life in the name of Jesus. Bring healing, bring restoration, bring your blessing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. The Lord be with your spirit from this year. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us uh, in this Reflections Through the Journey Zoom meeting here on the University of God. It's been such a wonderful time with you. And we know this is just the beginning. This is the first of uh, many interactive sessions that we'll have. And we know that right now uh, you have received the gift of eyes that see and ears that hear what Jesus is telling you 
through his word and by his spirit. Our prayers are with you, our love is with you, and we are going on this journey together through the Bible in this year, 2023, through God's word, through God's spirit. God bless you. Thank you.